Alright, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another stream, with you boy, your host, Indiana Broad, aka James, let's get this show on the road. Alright, so we need to do a quick little recap of the Discord things that we did yesterday, so let's just do that real quick, get everything out of the way. These are the references for today, doing an armor study, doing this fox. Fox probably going to come first, armor study probably going to come second, and then maybe, if we have time, we'll do one of those combined paintings, right? We'll draw fox and armor, sound fun? Moving on to things that have been done in the meantime. Rami, good to see you. Canary, good to see you. Good to see you all, you guys. I'm very, very happy to see you. Abs, I did see you uh, indeed come in first. And give yourself a shout out. Mari, great work on the study, man. Really, really proud of you. Also, Glow, did you get any more uh, any more work done on that study you did yesterday? Good to see you all. We have some new emotes in here. Plops, long time no see. Good to have you back in here. Anyway, so getting on with the Discord, I'm going to do a few things. So I did indeed complete uh, not complete but just give a little bit of a painting uh of the gyarados piece just because it was just sitting there and i felt bad about not doing anything with it good to see you again this is the great is this queen supposed to be black is it black i think it should be uh it should be correct should be seeing the discord right now But I did this Gyarados piece, uh, remember I did make the roughs for this idea available on the Discord right over here. So if you guys want to jump in and do your own version of that, uh, more than uh, more than welcome to do so. I've broken down everything over here. Uh, you can take it up at any stage, you can put your own values here, you can put your own colors here, or you can just use my colors and render it. So I, I'll try and do this more often. It just depends on how much work I get done in the, in the morning and if I have time to prepare something for stream. Uh, but yeah, you're welcome to, to do this, I'm sure a few people have done it already. Good to see you, Elena. So, again, going back to the studies, what do we have done? So, recap from yesterday, we finished painting Bren. Uh, I did a heavy paint last night. Heavy paint, if you guys, you guys do not know, is a very, very, very basic painting software. And it really demands you to have a lot of focus on things that you don't generally focus on in art. So, it's a great exercise, and I do recommend trying it. And you see how much I'm struggling. Like, to compare, that's my... I think this was like a 45 minute heavy paint at like 5 in the morning and this was a f over here this one is my 45 minute study in Krita uh, at like what 8 8 30 the night so it's 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 getting there I thought it was it's really cool I highly encourage this by the way just google heavy paint software uh, really cool really really cool stuff I've been having a lot of fun if you guys want to see more examples of heavy paint let me show you on Charlie's discord uh, here you go I put mine on there there's some of the work that Charlie's been doing. Very graphical, very interesting, and also really demands a lot of understanding on layering, on process, on what essential requirement is, on color noting. It's a very unique set of requirements, and I really, really think that a lot of us could benefit from it. Not necessarily people that are just starting out painting. I wouldn't recommend it then. I mean, it could be if you want an edge on your, comp on your competition later on, because if I started painting with heavy paint, I might not have made half the mistakes that I did. But yeah, you see people are absolutely killing it on this Discord. And it's just a unique quality to the paintings. I'm actually really, really adoring it. And people are absolutely killing it on these on these paintings. So yeah, go check that out if you haven't already. Get in on this because I'll be doing more. We got a Zorn study by Solmer. Great job, Solmer. Most of the time I do see that there's an issue uh, with your edge transitions on all of your work. But I don't see that very evident here. I think uh, your shapes are quite well chosen. Specifically your values very well chosen in this painting. So great job on that. Good little graphic breakup with the hair. It's very nice. We got Wiz the Bifa. I think this is indeed... Uh, who is this now? This is... Mari Senpai? Isn't it? Wiz the Bifa? Is my name? There you go. Could you uh, change your name on the Discord just so I don't uh, get confused? But yeah, I think this is a solid study. Um, if you want to make my thoughts on it, I think you could push the darks and the lights indeed a little bit uh, a little bit more. Some things are being... Um, equated. I think your proportions are pretty... Goddamn great. Uh, probably the strongest thing that I like in the study, and that's the most important thing when you try to draw anything, is the drawing itself. The painting, I oftentimes think of as a little bit secondary, because if you draw something really accurately, it becomes so much more easier to paint. The same goes drawing is two-thirds painting, so it does become better. Uh, quite nice, but you are missing on some darks. I would like to see more dark in the eye. A bit more of a burnt over here, a burnt color. But for what it is, as a kind of like a flat color on line work, I think it looks beautiful. And I could easily see this on like a professional watercolor or whatever. I think it's great. I changed now. Cool. Rami, good job. Good job on this dude. Especially your rendering, your usage of the shapes and edges. I think very accurate. Uh, again, the same critique that I would give. And don't worry about this. Uh, it is a very, very common thing 
that everybody goes through when you first start painting, which is your values don't punch hard enough. We tend to work in a little bit of that mid-tone region uh, because it's kind of scary to just jump some darks because when you put that dark on there or when you put that light on there, it oftentimes reads as wrong to you. But I encourage you to betray your instincts to say that, you know what, even though this feels wrong, I'm going to do it anyway. Because, and if you want any further substantiation on that, simply sample your reference, check what the dark is, check what the light is. Because oftentimes the darkness in reality in any proper scene would always punch a little bit harder than you think. So the darkness is over here, as well as the lights, perhaps the lights are fine. Uh, the darkness itself could punch a lot harder. So punch the darkness in. Uh, don't be afraid of it looking a bit too harsh. Just the more that you paint with it, the more you'll get used to it. And I think it'll really improve the quality of this piece because your shapes themselves, the edges and all the way, and your painting and your overall proportions, I think that's fine. I think that's, that's pretty good. Um, I, I don't have an issue with it, especially for the time frame. Uh, but really, what I want to see is those dogs punching in, because remember, we are painting this with the idea of painting it in realism, and the cornerstone of realism is value, you know, alongside the proportion. So we really need to get that good separation of light and dark. We want to be able to simply to get that effect of the light just so, so strongly on our painting, which is why we need to punch in those darks. So don't be afraid of it, just try it, and if you ever wonder, am I going Am I going wrong here, is this too dark, then don't be, don't hesitate to sample, you're still learning, so it's, it's completely fine. In fact, I'll do this all the time, like if I'm painting and I'm just not sure, like it's just such an itch in the back of my head, like this doesn't seem dark enough, do I need to go darker? I mean, I'll just sample, I'll just check, nothing wrong with that, right? You gotta use, you gotta use the tools that are available to you, because you're doing so with the intention of learning. I have a portrait from old streams from yesterday too, took 3.4, I think I do remember seeing it. Oh, in there. Where is that portrait? I think I did see it up there somewhere. Yeah, this one, right? This is actually a very special place in my heart because this is the portrait that I did when I got my first ever screen tablet. So a really, really important one. Uh, overall, let's uh, talk about your... There's a lot of things to talk about here. The first thing that I'll say is your overall perspective of the face is actually pretty goddamn good. That is a hard thing to do. It's a hard thing to get right and you're almost there. Uh, if you want a bit of a tip on uh, this whole idea, it's a tip that comes from your boy Jay Hansen Art on Twitch, a great portrait painter. Um, he always says that when you're focusing on a painting coming from the three-fourth perspective or three-fourth angle, it's pointing three-fourth, he likes to focus on the far side of the face because if you can get this right, everything kind of falls into place. So you'll, you'll see him oftentimes he starts with this crook right here. Now, thinking about the way that we do it personally, if you want a bit of an idea on how I do it, I start, when I'm putting this kind of painting in, I start with something called an axis line. And an axis line in the Loomis method is exactly where the face is pointing. Let me show you. Quickly go jump over to my canvas. So an axis line is this. Oh, oh sorry. So in the traditional Loomis breakdown, it looks like this. So we start with that overall idea of the sphere, just like that. So we draw a quick little sphere right? and we, we chop it up into two lines or whatever we draw the circles let me draw the entire circle for you it goes there it goes there right you have a center point and it goes in the middle and that's basically your brow line right your brow line and that's your nose line and your chin's going to be somewhere down there so the axis line is actually going to determine exactly where this guy's pointing so if i put, put it like that for example parallel that means that this little plus right here tells me where the face is pointed and i don't oftentimes draw this outwardly but it's basically what i think about all the time and think about because ultimately this cross tells us where the face is pointed so that's what you should really be worried about. Uh, and also the other way around is just to do it this way, wherein I will figure out... Apologies. Bit of a misclick. But I will figure out this little location first, right? The far side of the head. And I really encourage you, if you want to get better at this whole idea, please, please do trace compares. If you want to figure out how far away you are, I think that's a very, very good idea. Because this, this side of the face always tends to go a little bit fatter than it needs to. And that's something you want to actively avoid because it skews the perspective a lot. Because right? you remember the face plane, the plane of the face is just this much, right? The entire face will sit on this plane, which means that if you kind of draw this more thicker, it gives you the impression that it's actually like this, than like just this. Because if you draw it thicker, it gives the impression that it bends around, so you want to be careful about that. Okay, uh, moving on, a few more thoughts about that. Let's quickly review in the efforts of completion. The comment is, I get that with the values, if it's not in black and white, I can see... Uh, the lack of dark values, but would have to start from the beginning. I had no time. Yeah, yeah, don't worry about that. One thing that I will warn against, however, is the application of uniform texture. 
Um, the thing about that is, and I can show you this again, it's a very important thing that I see people make mistakes, uh, even like really good artists uh, will make this mistake every now and again. Um, <laughs> I'm not a really good artist, but I've made this mistake every now and again. Wherein, if let's say I have a dark value as my background color, and I want to spray a bit of light value on top. Well, here's the issue. If I want to add light here, I can do so in a few ways. I can just block the light in and the light is nice and strong. It is a value that it shows. It is strongly controlled. However, here comes an issue. The issue is when I paint this with a canvas brush, you see this little area right here? That's a bleed through. And the bleed through actually affects the overall value because when you tend to look at this kind of value, you know, from a distance or whatever, I mean, you try to read that value and there's bleed through happening, that bleed through will lower the actual value of it. So the read ends up not being what you want. So the read of this and the read of this, they're not the same. And the purpose of abstraction is to maintain the read. I mean, you can, you can do whatever you want with the read, but you need to maintain that values happen. So I can show you a few paintings from that era when I first started experimenting with texture that I really couldn't get paintings to look non-flat. And this was the reason. There was way too much bleed through. Some bleed through actually is important because that's the point of texture. But you need to understand how to control the bleed through. So the, the solution here is to start from a neutral place, you know, a neutral base color, and then get the value on top. So now the value is not affected as heavily, right? Because this value, I still have the texture retained, but I don't have that intense amount of bleed through. So the value disruption is not as hard. And that's really, really important. So what does that mean in the context of paintings? What that means is once you're done with your line art, once you have everything that you want to do, like let's say you, you have your overall sketch and you say, okay, I'm happy with it. So you have everything goes. Here's what you do. You first, you select underneath it on a layer and you apply a flat amount of value underneath it, a neutral flat value. And this will do a few things. The main thing it does is it provides you a solid neutral base from which to start adding colors and texture because you will see most of the time in most softwares and most application, when you apply a value, when you apply any sort of brush stroke, there is going to be a bleed through. And that bleed through will affect your ability to control the piece and also mess up your reads. Because let's say that I wanted a dark value on over here somewhere, but when I apply the value that has bleed through in it, then I don't actually get the value that I chose. I get a value somewhere in between. And I don't, I don't want that. I want to have some amount of, uh, of control. So really, really important uh, to put this initial layer in. They do this traditionally as well. For example, when you see people do portraits traditionally, you'll see them kind of make, they'll put the lines in or they'll put a, a general like brownish, let's say they'll put an ochreish background color in on their canvas. Not everybody, but most people, most people that I follow at least. So they'll put like an ochreish or bluish or whatever. They'll just stay in the canvas, have it be somewhat interesting, have a bunch of strokes in here. And then you'll see them do something very, very intentionally. They'll apply a layer of gesso or something, just some sort of neutral pigment. They'll apply the gesso in the area that their painting is going to be, their portraits are going to be. They'll apply this gesso and then they'll go over with charcoal and then they'll, they'll do the measurements. They'll say, okay, well, I want to, I'm going to put the head right here. The eye is going to be right there. You know, they'll do all of this, all this stuff. And they'll say, okay, that's going to be my nose. It's going to be my chin. And they'll paint over this. And the reason is they don't want this dark to be bleeding into this because you want a strong separation of foreground background, right? So you want a better control. And then they'll put their initial layering on top of this. And then if the background needs to be attended to, they'll paint over it in the, in the future. But that's how they started. So really important. That kind of idea. So remember the bleed through. It's, it's actually quite important because it is um, what will keep your texture pieces from actually having a strong read, right? Because I use a ton of texture on my pieces and I guarantee you none of these pictures will look as good as they do um, if I didn't have that solid base. Like imagine if I used this white brush over a dark in, in, immediately, I'd have a ton of dark bleed through going into the strokes over here, which would ruin my read, right? Because that's a blown out area of light. So indeed you're looking for bleed through. That's what makes textures look good, but you don't want a, a bleed through so stark and so out of place that it ruins your read. And that's the, uh, that's the nuance right there. Let's go back. Any final thoughts about that study? I think it overall is quite good. I think it's quite nice whatsoever, but you see what I'm talking about here, right? So the speckle over here kind of ruins it, kind of blur your eyes, evaluate this position against this position and see what the darks look like. Not quite, right? Not particularly hitting that mark because the shape is quite, quite good, right? I mean, it tilts a bit more to this direction, but the real thing that's bothering me here, because hair is ambiguous, I don't particularly need the hair to look exactly the way it does in the reference, as long as the volumes and what matches. But what's really killing it is that because it's so, it, it lacks that shadow over here, it lacks that clean, clean shadow. 
what's happening here is that it ruins our read, so the hair doesn't read two dimensionally anymore. Also, another note to make here in terms of texture, you don't have to put texture in the dark. I think this is a fairly important point as well. You can, but you don't have to, because the way the texture can be interpreted as information, and you can say that, okay, I'm not going to have too much information in my darks. Oftentimes, this is almost encouraged by having a strong value structure, because if your value structure is strong enough, that means that you wouldn't have enough value to have detail in the shadows anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, but yeah, just kind of contain that read a bit more. And if you want to use this texture, I actively encourage you to do so, but use so sparingly. I remember one of the crits that I've given you in the past is that the real beauty of texture is when it's used, you know, in moderation. Because you need to have untextured areas very clearly visible for the texture to truly, to truly shine, you know? So contrast is the basis of most art, of most appeal. So if you don't have that contrast, then things can go a little bit off the radar. So some thoughts about this, since I've done the study as well uh, in the past. Uh, values are quite accurately chosen, I think. Just missing a little bit of that light over here. Dark seem okay. And yeah, I mean, it looks beautiful. I think it's a very successful study. Very good work. That's a great work. The power has been killing it with the, with the schoolism studies. Not a bad breakdown whatsoever. This is uh, Jonathan Hardis's wife. Not bad whatsoever. I would have simplified here a bit more, but really good. And I think he also did another study. He did a fault study, I'm pretty sure. Oh, it's somewhere around here. Books in progress. No problem, Rami. Good job, dude. Thanks for painting along. Oh, it's somewhere in here. Am I, have my eyes misleading me? I have a good control over what goes into my Discord. Strange. Well, if you see that piece anywhere, tell me. Maybe some critiques. I've got to do this critique later on. Uh, we did this, do this critique, though. I did this last night. Uh, I think somebody posted the Discord. I forget who this was. I think it was Kipye. It was Kipye. Uh, the crit was getting this to look more metallic and getting the light to be more realistic. And indeed, I did make some changes. Simply up the, uh, the contrast. I didn't uh, do any filtering on this piece. I just straight painted everything. But uh, just make sure that the light played more on the metals. Remember, the fundamental thing that we think about when we do the metals is no longer high contrast arbitrarily. It is metals are reflective. So when you see a light source, that light source is going to play along the surface of the metal. So all I did was I up the play idea. I introduced a bunch of lost edges towards the side. For example, there's no reason that this top of the helmet needs to be light because there's no light source there, which means that the metal would reflect the darkness, which means that the metal would be dark, right? Remember, metals are just little mirrors. That's what you can think about them. Well, most reflective surfaces are. And the hands were looking a little bit awkward with the with the light getting blowing out. Remember that when you have a light casting out, it casts shadows. So the back of these hands, unless this light is really, really, really bright, the back of these hands will not be uh, light. They will be dark. And uh, kind of correcting, the, correcting for that ever so slightly kind of gives you more of an impression of, oh, it's actually coming from his hand as opposed to it's just a light on top of his hand, right? A bit of structuring right there. A bit of armor rendering. Uh, I do need to work on my gemstone rendering, though. I have no clue. Uh, I know people like Amy Asher, or Asher East rather, on uh, on Twitch, they're really good with gemstones. She's crazy good. I've got to look at some of her VODs, get more information. That's our recap though. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Thanks so much for painting along. Very, very cool. Siege, how's it going Siege? Good to see you. Follow the Siege man, follow Sugi Woogie right there. My stream team partners, great painter. S Maddie M, how's it going? Good to see you, Maddie. What is that glow? Lurking and trying to learn? Same. I don't even know what that is. Hate to receive critique and run, but I have to go to work. We'll get to the third work of painting tomorrow. Hey, don't worry about it, it's all good. A joke? Cool. Alright, let us paint let us paint this little fox here. How beautiful does this fox look? It's gorgeous. Let's get to this 45 minute study. Let me just make sure that my timer is up and ready. You guys can set up in the meantime. Find the references on the Discord, everything up there for you. All this done. I gotta ask, I gotta ask Mills how Maddie sets her timer up because that timer is uh, probably a little bit better than mine, eh? Thank you, DT. Okay. Hope everybody's ready. Also, download that heavy paint, guys. We gotta, we gotta be doing more heavy paints. I think heavy paint's gonna get us all into, uh, into jobs one day. Mark my words. 
Okay. Timer is operational, up and running. All right, you guys ready? Let me simply fix the canvas and then we can go. Also, dual stream incoming. Me and Ashley, aka Ashley M. Hills, are going to be doing a dual stream quite soon. So be on the lookout for that. That's not going to be my traditional type of study stream. What it is going to be is something like a paint along thing. Kind of like the Bob Ross whole idea, but uh, we got the idea because somebody in our mutual friends group had a very bad experience in uh, in a paint along class or whatever. So we thought, you know what, let's just let's just do it better. I think I could do it better. Maybe. Not to do it on on, but I know a little bit about it. I think Mills made the timer specifically for Maddie. Dude, Mills is a, is a genius. My goodness. Okay, I actually started painting. My goodness, I didn't even start the timer. Alright, I'm going to erase my work because I don't like cheating. Okay. Ready, right, guys? 3, 2, 1, and we go. The first study of the day. Easy enough. We start with a little bit of... Well, do we want to start with the background? It's going to be a couple of strokes, right? Why not? Just a couple of strokes here and there. All good. And maybe some other information right here. See, that's, a, that's an abstract area right there. It's not as evident as you would think so i don't want to paint that with just flats i want to start with just this right here what? james finishing the night is planned hell yeah dude finish up that study i would recommend uh painting this along with us though right now because you know i don't want to leave you have you left out but yeah no do what you uh, you're interested in because you if that that night right there that night might be like a like a mental challenger to you right so overcoming it's probably gonna be a lot more valuable to you than this just a couple of little little marks here solomir good to see you buddy how's it going today just a couple of little marks here nothing too nothing too interesting they're not particularly guided all that well but i just want some sort of break up here because ultimately the way i'm going to light this is not going to draw too much attention down here. just a little bit of noise and that's all we need to do let's do a very very quick block in for the fox just want to get that overall structure out of the way so what is it composed of we break those shapes down get to its essential components because we don't want to get line art we're not interested in line art. there's going to be a painting so one line right there one line right there what we're maintaining is that overall volume we want to get that volume approximately where it needs to go and you see that overall for lack of better words a showed shape get that showed shape out there easy peasy 18 plus channel by the way if you're underage please ban yourself and get this little mark right there easy i'm fine and you're doing well so this overall height needs to be addressed right so this goes a little bit lower than halfway and according to me, that's halfway. That's halfway over there. So a little bit lower. That's lower right there. And then we get this little angle from here. Because it's important. I don't want this fox head to look enormous. Or indeed, as is most of the time the case, too little. I don't want it to look too little on the canvas. I want to at least get some initial measurements. Another thing, please banish. It's true. US, man. What is this? Mixer? Come on. Okay. Get this overall idea out there. Look at that beautiful, beautiful little heart shape. How pretty does that look? So it's important that we draw these shapes in right now. And why is that? Because shapes are easy to evaluate. I have no idea what a fox looks like. I haven't met a fox. But I know what triangles look like. I can gauge triangles against each other quite accurately. I can gauge pentagons with each other quite accurately. That's easy. Right? We can do that. And you can do that too. So let's do that, man. Let's get those, those big, big, easy shapes. Because... You will find out very swiftly as you study art, as you get more into this idea, that people that are good at art keep things simple. Because the idea of being a complex master isn't the idea of doing things compl complicated. It's the idea of being able to break things down simply for yourself. It's not like every master is a 500, like a 500 IQ savant that's able to do like mental, mental mathematics in their head. That's not the case. It's just that they're able to break things down easier than you are. And they have years and years of mechanical experience that allows them to apply they break them in an appropriate fashion, nice and swiftly. You guys paint, I'm gonna sue. I have like two different bags. A big fan of bags. Good fortune. Okay, so this little bottom thing over there. So I'm gonna say that nose is about halfway. Would you guys agree? Uh, it doesn't matter because I'm gonna paint halfway. That's halfway right there. A little bit lower than that will be the, the bottom of the schnoot right there. And then. Again, evaluated by a house. Everybody can see house. I can't see the eyes, but I can see house sometimes. Sometimes. So I get a rough idea. Remember, I'm not, I don't want to be perfect with this, right? I don't want to be exactly, exactly perfect. But I want to get a rough notion of where everything needs to go. Right? Is that Finlandish right there? My goodness. Hold on, let me pause the timer because my... I want to see what I'm looking at. Like, I saw the tip of your name. So this is what I'm looking at. I'm like, from that I got Finlandish cosplay. 
me just raise this real quick. What do I need to do for this? So you guys get extra time, you goddamn cheaters. Raise this up. Oh, I'll talk a little. What do you plan to paint today? We are going to be painting this little fox and this little armor dude. And then probably do a combined painting. Alright, continuing on. 3 minutes 53 seconds into the painting. Okay, easy enough. So I want to get some overall measurements. These ones were immensely useful for the wolves. And wolves are actually kind of hard. I, I can draw cats quite easily, but wolves a little bit of a challenge for me. So you see that little central line that kind of comes from the middle of the ear? I'm going to draw the central line downwards and that will actually map out my overall facial plane because the entire plane of the wolf's face, it lies in this area right here. You see that little square? I'm being excessive, I'm actually wasting time, but it's important to kind of you know, verify this stuff for myself. And then based on that, I can do a bunch of interesting things, right? So now that I know where that is, I can kind of wear this out right here, get more volume towards the side. So this might seem like a bunch of pointless marks and I <laughs> might agree with you a lot of this is pointless because a lot of the marks are for me to emphasize things but hey it's important right it's important to verify it's a study good let's get that separation so the most important thing on most paintings involves some sort of character right some sort of um, feature some sort of major major focal point that is an alive living thing an alive living thing wow um, is usually going to be this triangle right here so the face on the face the eyes and the nose triangle that's going to be really very really important and capture that fairly accurately is going to be the primary goal so let's get that a little bit out of the way just right now so i know that this over here is going to be my nose that's been measured already is that right so then above this line a little bit is going to be my nose right there and i can evaluate this raw shape in between when i say raw shape what i'm talking about is i'm not thinking about this as a bridge of the nose i'm thinking about it as just whatever square or triangle or whatever it is fits well inside right so if it fits I'm going to evaluate that shape. The idea behind that is that I don't want to consider it as anything but what it is visually to me. Because when we try and do that, we are so, so biased by what we think things look like. And that's something you will actively fight against as a beginner. Cynix calls it the fight against iconography. Which basically means that when you draw a fox, when you draw an eye, when you draw a hand, we have this inclination all the time to draw things as we think they are as opposed to draw them as they actually are. And that will royally screw over your proportions. It will be something you always, always fight against. I fight against it till this day. And I paint quite often, quite regularly, as a matter of fact. Then I actively have to fight against that, man. Fight against that urge. And it's going to be a rough fight because it's a fight against yourself, right? It's a fight against your own inclinations. But realize that if somebody can get an accurate painting in the same number of strokes as you take to get an inaccurate painting, then ultimately it's a question of technique question of experience and a question of knowing where you're going wrong because that always fascinates me right like i can i can count the number of strokes that somebody does for like a zorn study or i can count the number of strokes for like a, a sergeant study or something i can think to myself wait a second i took the exact same number of strokes just to mess up my own painting thank you for the follow by the way uh much tata thank you dude so that's really important to consider right why are people able to get that much more accurate than you are that's because i mean they're not fighting urges as much as we do because remember, we didn't start out in this fanciful art college, right? We didn't f start out being raised in a laboratory where they put paintbrushes into our hands. We started out just regular, just painting for fun. And in that painting, we have developed some rather nasty habits, right? And that's not, there's no problem in that, right? There's no issue in that because those are all fixable. But like they say in lifting, man, it takes hundreds and hundreds of reps to fix bad form. But it only takes 50 reps to learn good form, right? But to learn form in general. 50 to learn 100 to fix always harder i'm gonna get this general notion this in here i want to quickly do a little bit of a tilt on this here your proportion because i usually tilt things a little bit too awkwardly on my paintings that tilt seems to be perfectly fine i think i can complete things uh this way there's a little bit of a shift right there i can kind of offset the shift right there because i'm sitting at a pretty incredible angle away from my tablet Speaking of which, Philanders, you know the tablet that you helped support me for? We actually met the goal for the tablet, and uh, and we got it, so I'm painting on it right now. So I do thank you for that. I know that it's been a while since you've been in here, but we did make the goal for the tablet, and it, it's fantastic. I am having such such a good time with it. So thank you so much for your contribution. Okay, so general idea of the uh, proportions right there, and we can just jump into it. 8 minutes and 22 seconds into the painting, we start by applying a little bit of this here base value what is the reason we do this 
The reason, again, we explained it at the very beginning of the stream, we do not want there to be intense amounts of bleed through. Bleed through can kill the rate of the painting, so you want to have... And it doesn't take all that much time, does it? It doesn't take all that much time. It's just a good habit to do. It's one of those best practices. Because if you have an intense amount of bleed through, that will demolish any sense of read that your painting will have. And I'm asking, what, I mean, what do I really mean by saying bleed through? Bleed through in the sense that if I want a dark value, but I superimpose it over a lighter value with some amount of texture, that texture is going to let that whatever underneath value bleed through the actual value and corrupt it. It's going to make it an unclean value. And that's really important to note, right? That's actually a non a non-trivial thing because that can really wreck a painting in terms of its overall value structure. I'll start applying some of the darks in here. I don't need to apply too much dark, just enough to get that read. Look at how beautifully warm that is. So when I say beautiful, beautiful warmness, and I can't particularly get that color, what I usually do is I'll just get a little bit of an orange in my uh, on my brush and I'll burn an orange in there because I want that nice, nice darkness. Okay, paint in a little bit more dark right there. And this seems a bit more saturated. And the really important thing when it comes to painting quickly, and painting quickly should be part of what you're thinking about if your goal is indeed improvement. Because the more you can paint, the better usually the improvement's going to be. Because ultimately it's just a matter of how many good quality pieces can you get, right? How many useful pieces can you really get when you paint? So being able to paint quicker is something that you should all actively look for if improvement is indeed your goal. So in the, in the effect of painting quickly, something that I should point out here, something that I am personally not as good at doing, but I do it every now and again, and I try and actively think about it, is that don't be too particular. Don't be too particular with the changes that you make. Don't be too particular with the things that you apply on your canvas. You have to be intentional, and you have to use your best judgment all the time. This, is, this part is true. However, don't go crazy, crazy off the edge with trying to make everything look perfect at the get-go in your pieces. That's a mistake. That's something that will cost you a bunch of time. Don't do that. Now just get in there at the very beginning. Make your best effort to get things looking fairly accurately. Right? But then beyond that, don't waste your time. Because ultimately, it's going to be so much better for the painting, for your own sake, for all these different aspects. It's going to be so much better for you to simply put your best impression down and then later on evaluate things with a manner of objectiveness. Because it is so much, you have to realize just how difficult it is for you to say this is the correct dark value, this is the correct light value. This kind of thing is just impossible for most people, right? Because we're not experts, right? We barely even started our little paint journeys here. So in that, in that respect, it's so, so important to understand that it's difficult for us to objectively evaluate value or color or edge, for that matter, in isolation. So what we do is we give ourselves context right to give ourselves a certain amount of context and we say okay this is my best impression of the red that's supposed to go here and then later on when everything is covered with paint then you can go ahead and make an, another impression and say you know what in the context of everything that i've painted so far i don't get the same impression and that's how you know it's actually wrong because if you don't have that context you're going to be wasting a bunch of time that's just how it goes gotta be careful about this stuff so do I know this red value over here is appropriate? Hell no, I don't know it's right. I have no clue. It's my best impression though, and I gotta stick with it, because it's gonna save me a bunch of time. Because otherwise, if I keep trying to search for the right value, I'm gonna be searching and searching and searching till the end of time. I can't afford to use that. This is one of the biggest mistakes that I made when I first started learning proportions. I used to try and get like the perfect line at the get-go, right? First line perfect, second line perfect, third line perfect. And I was like, okay, if I get everything perfect, then I don't have to waste time later on to fix things. But that doesn't work that way. Nothing works that way. You can't get everything perfect. That's a fool's errand. And in fact, trying to get things perfect is going to do exactly what you don't want to do, which is waste a bunch of time trying to make things look perfect. You want to get good proportions accurately quickly. You don't want to waste a bunch of time on proportion, especially as a painter. A painter, you want to get to the painting as fast as possible. We don't want to waste time. So in that respect, so important. So, so important. I'm going to get a lovely a purplish dark in here. Nice. So important as a painter, get to that stage as quickly as possible. And it's harder to control, it's so much, so much harder to control. Don't consider things in terms of what's most effective. Right? And what's most effective isn't to try and get everything done. It'll be ideal to do it that way, but is it possible? No, hell no. The same way that if you're doing a professional piece, if you're doing a commission for somebody, and they say, hey, I want this to be. I want it to look like this. Do you just start with like a finished painting? Hell no, you don't. You start with a thumbnail. You start with a color off. 
you want to figure things out why do you do that because you want to guarantee the best possible chance of that painting being successful and you can't just do that by just jumping into the painting there's more to it than that and that's over complicating everything and the more over complication you have the more difficult it is to control and now you can afford such over complication on all the paintings right you can afford it if you know exactly what you're doing if you have experience and even if you're a great painter you can be out of your comfort zone and that's going to be like right back where you began like if you ask me to paint a female for you in profile i'll do that no problem if you ask me to paint let's say a, a wolf for example in profile maybe i could do it but a wolf you know front on maybe i wouldn't be as confident how many times have i done that in my life how many front on wolves have i really studied not that many i've studied front on lions so i might be able, be able to like reconstruct something from there but not not enough for it to be convincing so why on earth would i ever try and just jump to conclusions when it comes to drawing lions or wolves in the in the front angle or the wolves in the front angle i wouldn't set of idea so with that in mind, just bear in mind, there, there is a very, very important distinction to be, make, uh, distinction to be made here. And that distinction is simply, do what's most effective, right, for your current skill level. Do what's most appropriate. Oftentimes that does not involve trying to get everything to, looking perfect. You will come at a time, I'm sure all of us will come to a time where it's indeed going to be possible to do that. We just make every stroke our last stroke. But at this point, if we try and do that, Without actively understanding like all these aspects of what we're doing before that, if you actively try and push towards doing that right now, that was going to lead to a slurry of failed painting. So what is our goal right now then? It's not to just give up on trying to paint accurately. It's to remember the word that I used. I said best, best intention, best, best guess. Right? We work to try and improve that idea. That's the that's the overall goal. So when I say make every stroke your best guess, your idea of a best guess will improve. You know, given time, you'll be able to see colors more accurately. You'll be able to see values more accurately. You'll be able to make strokes that are better to, I mean, better suited to evoke particular ideas, right? And once you're able to do that, then the amount of strokes you need to kind of rein things in on your paintings to make them look more accurate, the amount of strokes needed to fix things, all those reduce because the more intentional you are and the more aware, aware you are of your own like predilections, the better it's going to be in that regard. And therefore, you won't, you're not going to bleed as much time anymore. So it becomes less, 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 and finally, your best intention is just accurate. It's simply accurate. That's when you know you've achieved some degree of mastery. Your best intention is just accurate, then you, my friend, are are done. Not really done, but you know, you're better than most of us. None of us are really done. See your bleed through issue right there. That, that uh, light's not bleeding through. Prop that light's not reading properly because of the dark. So I gotta neutralize it first like this, and then paint over. Let's push these docks a bit heavier, huh? Push these docks and then bring those lights out. Okay, ask myself, do I have my separation? Uh, almost. What do I mean by separation? Separation means, am I properly evoking the light versus dark in my piece? Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. But it's important to always double, triple, quadruple check that. Because that is the essential quality of these pieces that we do. That's what we're really, really trying to search for. Because if we aren't able to correctly convey to our audience exactly where the light's coming from, we as an artist, as a realistic artist, have failed in our duties, right? If we're unable to just convey accurately where the light's coming from, then we've, we've done something extremely wrong. Because that's exactly what, that's the point of painting something realistically. Just that light thing. And not to say anything about the, uh, you know, the things that make abstract art or impressionism or postmodernism. They have their own little you know, quota for what makes it good, what makes it bad. For our little idea of realism, for the style that I study, what's most important? That value and shape and proportion appropriately working together to try and convey the direction of light source. That is the point. Okay. Zoom out. Make an assumption. Make a guess. Okay, let's bring this in right here. And I can actually encroach in this area a little bit more. Idea of layering a bit more over there. Just kind of breaking that, that edge. And of course, getting appropriate amounts of warmth because I need that warmth in here. I can't just have these dogs be desaturated. You see that? See how much of a difference that makes? Applying such a beautiful, beautiful warmth down here. Good idea. And this orange over here, maybe. There we go. 
So I can throw on some bunch of textures right now because my valleys are locally somewhat situated that I can actually afford to do this, which is why I paint at the very beginning. I paint with an idea of keeping things fairly, fairly decent, fairly uh, flat in terms of the texture. And then I can kind of jump in and do a little, little bit of things like this, for example. I'm gonna get a bit more information in there. And I want to do this not super early on, but early enough that it actually gets integrated. One of the worst things you can do with texture is the idea of having it be just this last moment thing where it looks kind of sprinkled on. You want it to be a little bit more integrated with the piece, maybe texture, so. Don't start with super early. Some people will start super early, like Marco Bucci, for example, will start at the very beginning. His first little movements on his canvas are going to be just applying a bunch of interesting texture. And that can be respected. I think uh, you can make success successful paintings from that idea. But personally for me, I found better success by just starting flat and then working my way up into texture. Maybe you want to skip this step entirely. Maybe you don't like texture. Fine. I mean, you can't say you don't like texture, right? Because texture is edge and edge is a component of realism. So you can't say you don't like it. But maybe you don't like texture brushes. That's fine. That's, that's possible. I could probably make a good argument against them. I personally love using them, though. Little ear. So goddamn cute. And the value needs to be appropriate over here. So just because you have that light value over here doesn't mean you can have the same amount of light value over here because materials are different. Not just materials are different, but colors react differently to, to light, right? So just because this light, this light area is so light, I can't use the same value over here because if I did, it would look like this. And that just looks wrong, right? The reason is because when things are darker, they're not to get blown out as much. Because white's generally a lot more reflective. Something to consider. Also, when it comes to the, the subject of edges, remember this ancient ancient adage not really but it's an important adage which is maintain the abstraction so when i place in my little strokes up here for the top of the fox's head i am not putting in a very soft edge i will put a soft edge right here because it makes sense to do so because it's going out of focus but everywhere else you still see that i put a very very look at the difference right here this is soft that's hard right that's called maintaining abstraction which is the idea that when you see a hard against a soft you paint the hard against the soft you don't paint everything hard you don't paint everything soft Again, restate it in another way. The idea is that when you see something that evokes a certain kind of idea on your canvas, it's really important to maintain that, that same idea. So you don't want to like go crazy with it. You don't want to like, make something that is soft look hard. You want something to look hard soft. I mean, you can do these things uh, as an as a impression, right? As, as your own interpretation of the idea. But if you want to correctly convey things, then you want to maintain that idea. Maintain the same amount of abstraction. So don't soften up a hard, don't harden up a soft. Don't create a pattern when none, none exists. Like all these ideas, really, really important. Okay, thinking about sampling off your own canvas, be important. So sample off my own canvas a little bit. This is very important to do, by the way, in the, in the interest of speed. Try and incorporate as much as you can from your own, from your own painting. It's gonna help you a lot down the line because it does so many things. One is it just saves you time. And that's almost reason enough to use it, right? It's almost reason enough to simplify a beautiful piece. Because if you save yourself time, you have more time to work on things, you have more time to shape things, which makes it leads for a better painting in general. It leads to just a simply better painting. But beyond that, it affords you a measure of coordination in your piece. And that's really important. Having good, strong coordination. Because when you have multiple colors or the same color used in multiple places in your piece, that gives you this immediate sense of very, very strong coordination because things will harmonize with themselves. A bit yellow down here, don't you think? A bit more yellow down there? Maybe I'll apply a bit of this and see what happens. Like that. Very neat. Hey, welcome Mirage to the Discord. Do I have that exclamation mark Discord thing in my title? Because ever since I started doing that, I've been putting a few more people in here. Maybe that's just good, uh, it's good marketing, right? I have no idea how to run things, by the way. I'm absolutely clueless when it comes to uh, the promotion and all these other things. Maybe I'll get somebody to teach me. Or I can just keep bugging Pam about it. Okay, continuing on. 22 minutes in. We are just about halfway through on this painting. Going quite well, I think. Everything's going well. That might be a little bit too, uh, too large, but that's okay. I can just bring more. Okay. So now make an overall evaluation of where things need to go. I'm going to slightly deset this because they're going to start putting in a little bit of that frontal effect on right hand side. There are a few ways of doing this. Here's one of them. I'll get a zigzaggy kind of pattern right here on the side and I'll bring it outwards like this. Now what I can do is I can kind of paint a little bit more freely and paint on this side. I'm not going to affect the overall read. 
right hand side, right? So a bit of a masking thing. That's a fun little way of doing this. And it gets blown out more towards the light. Very kind of quick way of doing this. And now it's not that's not all we do, by the way. We can't just simply do that. Because it leaves way too high of an edge. But it's a way of getting that initial portion out there really, really quickly. And once that's done, we can go back in there and paint a little bit more. Let's actually get a little bit of uh, light over there. A beautiful, beautiful light. This stuff will save our ass, by the way. Learning how to do this, learning a method of how to do this, is really going to add... Like, could you imagine painting a drawing? Like, presenting a drawing to, like, an art director or whatever, whatever and you have this kind of rendering on one of your uh, one of your counter roughs? Like, my goodness. So, knowing a quick way of doing this is so important. At least to me, it's immensely important. Because that's such a cool, such a cool effect, right? How cool does that look? Looks awesome. I'm saying it looks awesome in the reference. I think I did an okay job right now with those couple of strokes, but ref is where it, tr it truly, truly shines. I want to have grays in this image, but I don't want to just jump into grays everywhere. Throw some of these greens in here. Okay. Let's get some issues or get some things sorted out with the uh, with the serum mount. Whenever necessary, don't want to add too much. Do I get this mouth reading properly like a snoot? Because I was getting a bit of read issue there. So I'll paint in the value flat and then I'll apply the light on top of it. Remember the direction of the light over here, coming from top left, right side of the mount needs to have a bit more value attached to it. Maybe we shall do just that. Coming from this way, almost towards the, uh, almost from the back, you know? Back, which is onto the light thing. Okay, apply a single stroke right here. Let's go with that maybe, maybe a couple of strokes. Get too orderly. I want to look, things to look super, super like texture brushy. So sometimes I will just redo something because it's a little bit betraying what I actually want to happen. Have happened there. Okay, looking just uh, just about okay. I'm gonna slightly widen up that mouth, I think. Right now, since I have some real estate there, I can do so. The mouth goes, it follows this kind of line, right? So. It, it has a very similar line, a similar line kind of thing to, to line, so this actually tapers out like that. Let me just make some adjustments right there. It's going to be an interesting note, I'm actually going to use that in the future when I'm mapping on animals like this. I usually just do that with cats, but you see how much of a difference that makes? Immediately it kind of brings us to that wolfy kind of territory. And now the liberty in making changes on a somewhat finished canvas is that I can start sampling around my canvas and getting all these values in here, so changes become a lot easier to do. Let's have the luxury of just sampling around here already on my existing canvas and picking values that I know already fit in the value structure. And that's powerful. That's real powerful right there. Okay, I'm gonna bring that in, bring it upwards rather, because I'm getting a bit too high up. But what happens here? Is the nose positioned accurately? It is. It could be a little bit larger, I feel like. So we'll add some largeness to it. Like that. Sides. We bring it down appropriately about half its overall distance, so right about there, and that gives me the separation of the mouth, which goes right. Don't be precious with things. Get this darkness from down there. I just sample the darkness from down below because I know the darkness will work in the piece. Because remember, you, if once you have a certain amount of darkness, you can't betray that darkness, right? Same way, like you can't have one part of the piece be in darkness and some other part of the piece be in the same kind of darkness, but not have the same darkness value everywhere. That doesn't make any sense. I'm going to immediately take you out of a piece. Good to kind of coordinate. So, sampling, important. I got this green from this side of the uh, head. Now I have a, just a basic idea of where this needs to go. I'll just do this with a single stroke. There we go. Okay, moving on. Let's address the top of this guy's head. Okay, this little valley needs to be updated. Be a little bit lighter than he is. The great thing about this is when I do my value adjustments, I just go in there with a the texture brush. I already have the strength of my base value, which is close enough, so my texture read is not going to be too affected. Just do little changes like this, and it'll... Which, which technically I did, but not really, right? Very pretty. With these little strokes here, a bit more strokey. Gotta keep it technical. 
And of course, I, I want to add a bit of that sharpness in there. Not sufficient for me to just add in these, these very, very soft strokes. I want to add in some hardness right there. And then sometimes, indeed, it does make sense for us to slightly go in and get smoother, smoother transitions over here. A bit of an airbrush, maybe. So over there is a bit of a cast shadow, so it's not going to be super smooth. But just a bit softer, because I think initially that was painted with maybe some amount of selection tool. Fighting it a bit more. It's going to be reflected light from the orange. Also going to be a bit of green in here. 28 minutes. I'll put a little bit of green in here. Green's probably reflected from the uh, bottom. Nice. Continuing on with the painting. It's kind of rough, isn't it? So let's not paint it as uh, as harshly as I planned to initially. We'll paint it with a few strokes like that. Maybe. Give me a bit more room in the eye. It's also a bit more saturated than I'd like it to be. We can somewhat address that. We can throw in a little bit of blue in there if we want. Somewhat neutralize some of the kind of harsher... Uh... Of course, there's a plane there that we're kind of missing. Get that plane... I'll take that same light that's on the face right there. Just light enough, lighten it up. Same thing over here using this light value. Yeah, once you have things on your canvas, you can make changes a lot quicker. Okay, get that slight little direction of light in here. Light's gonna be coming from there. It's a highlight. Okay. I'm gonna zoom in for that eye later on. I'm gonna do it just now. I have the choice of adding information in the shadow. I'm going to choose not to. Keep the shadow flat. But I do need to add information to the edges. Right? That's important. Because while the shadows themselves can be flat, the edge of the shadow you need to address. Because if you don't address that, then things kind of go a bit awry on the painting. Because ultimately, if you want to make things look abstract or look simplified, the brain looks for things to kind of complete the story. And if you don't have enough things there, drawing kind of fails. So it'll look not in the darkness, but towards the edge of the darkness and try to say, okay, do I have enough pieces in here to complete the puzzle? If I don't, it'll be a bit of a problem. That's how you kind of paint with the idea of evocation or with the idea of actual painting, which is you give enough information to the brain to say, okay, you're looking at this. But this edge idea is part of that essential information, so you can't really escape it. bring this a bit higher. I want this eye to be drooping. Okay, cool. And apply a little bit of this information right here towards the right hand side just to kind of smooth out that transition. It is rather harsh, isn't it? And of course it is going to be because again we painted that with selection tool. Nothing's harder than selection tool. That's why very dangerous unless you feather it. Dangerous tool. It's very very powerful. However, we get into some control over those edges, otherwise things can go a bit... I do love using it. Not excessively. And there was a point where I would do an entire painting with just selection. So those days are behind me. But people did like those pieces a lot, I should point out. People did like those selection tool pieces a lot, mainly because of the very graphical nature of them. So if you want to get painting with shapes, if you want to get better with shapes, I would recommend using selection tool a lot. It is a great, great tool. And it can save you a bunch of time if you know what you're doing. Actually, Pauly, great job on that uh, self-portrait, my dude. 32 minutes into the painting. I will apply some context down here. Start uh, jumping around my canvas a little bit. Remember, maintain your value structure. Can't have things be too overstated right here, otherwise it's going to kill my read. This is going to be a, a second lightest dark on a lightest dark right here. Second darkest dark on a darkest dark right here. Sorry. Remember my terminology. I can barely see what I'm doing, by the way. This is a great angle to look at my canvas. Uh, I know this value is right, because it's going to coordinate with the rest of my piece. Oh, the value hierarchies are so powerful, dude. It's, even if your eye doesn't trust you, or you don't trust your eye, at least you can still get a good painting out there. Because everything coordinates with itself. Exactly what you're looking at. I had some challenges, but I will definitely do it again. Yeah, let me know if you need any uh, any crits on that one. I thought it was a great painting. Okay, again, more context, you see? Right over there. We don't want to see that harsh transition because that ruins our read. A little bit of that context like this. Go back and forth a few times. 
Ultimately, it's sale is a trouble. We have a much stricter read right there. How pretty that is. Dude. That light value is it's to die for. You can even do it this way, right? You can even slightly soften it up. I haven't considered this, but I could do this with even with an airbrush, right? Like that. Little transition. I get the softness that I need. See? Okay. Continuing on with the painting. A few light areas right there. Up the lightness a little bit more. Need a couple of patches of light. Just little, little bits of information here. That reinforce my lighting direction. So on this side, for example, I'll slightly nose it higher. I can do so right now. My structure is somewhat solid. Give the structure. So now I can start reinforcing it. A few of these values over here. Just little bits of little tidbits of information telling my viewer that oh well, see the light's actually coming from this way. Yeah, yeah, that way. Little bits of information here. Love that D side. D side is so cool. I'm gonna be so so harsh with that. Down here, and also we can maybe affect this edge a little bit more. Right? So don't just paint paint out, paint in as well. Canvas, good to see you, dude. Just in time, 10 minutes left. Practice down here as well. Any notes you have in it? I was playing a lot with noting and got a bit lost with so many colors. Sure, we can talk about noting. Noting's a fun subject. Same color on the right hand side. So much reuse, man. Reuse is so fun. Okay. I'm gonna get that nice dark. At this point, I have 10 minutes left. I wanna just address the eye. With some amount of accuracy. Okay, let's get that eye in there. Tried to paint along today. Been sick for a little while. I'm sorry to hear that, dude. Ooh, Eerie Canary with a 30 minute study. I'll look at that in a second. Got my phone out today. That's why I... I just randomly selected this value, but it seems kind of accurate. That's kind of funny. The complete random value, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm down with it, man. Let's go with this value. Also, I shouldn't be doing this this closely, it's a dumb idea. I feel better, Canvas. We miss you. Okay, get some orange on top here. Also, we have a new emote, by the way, guys. And if you're a tier whatever subscriber, there's another emote for you. I couldn't fit them into the regular amounts, but we have a study emote now. So whenever you see somebody going to study on Twitch, spam that study emote. Lovely and warm this is. There you go, courtesy of one XJ Poly right there. There you go, brother. Good job. Likely yellow up that. <laughs> it is awesome, isn't it? I'm gonna use this opportunity over here to add a free amount of, free amount of cool right there. Because coolness is just... It's just cool. What can I say about it? I wanna add some cool here. And by cool, I mean gray, because the gray on top of all of this dark, all this warm is going to read as cool. Yo, need does that, how neat does that look? It looks cool, doesn't it? I think, I think it looks cool. I don't even care what you say, it looks cool. Okay, let's remove this dark away because it's killing my read, it's killing it dead. And then I'm going to add a little bit of this greenish reflected light coming from the grass below, undoubtedly. That green. How precious he looks. He looks... Okay. A little bit of this bloom. So, so understated though. I want a bit of saturation coming in here, but not all that much. Oh, that's a bit too much. Ara, great work, dude. On the uh, on the schoolism assignments. How does his wife would be proud. I was trying to find your um, your cloth study, but I couldn't find it this morning. Uh, to show the, uh, the stream. Did you, uh, did you take that down for some reason? Did I just not find it? Am I just dumb? This eye is not as long, I'm aware. Cut it in like this. A bit too overstated, wouldn't you say? It doesn't look too bad. 
What I want to do over here is I want to slightly muddy that up a little bit because it's it's a little bit too strong for me. Slightly muddy that up. Here's on the right hand side. Looking at the value. That's what I want to do. It was ring a bit too strong for me, you know? Which muted? My clone study. Oh, okay, works in progress. There you go. And then I'll bring that highlight in there. That's what's going to seal the deal for me. Dude, it's so good to have Maddie back, man. One of my rituals before my stream is to have Maddie on. Some had Maddie and Aaron Blaze. Careful, man. I don't want this to be too. Okay, there we go. Toss in some of that light here. Lovely, lovely blue, blue light. Get a critique? Yeah, yeah, sure, of course. Didn't look at that piece last night. I have a few things to say. That curve in there. Wrong. Thanks for shouting to Maddie. Maddie's beautiful. Such a, such a great artist. Okay, let's get this overall gesture right there. I can emphasize that a bit more. A little bit more with some of my um, whiskers, but we'll get it right now with two strokes. Kind of puffing up my cheeks, I don't like that. I'm actually going to note some, uh, some harsher orange here. It might be cool, doesn't it? We're at the point where we can actually start noting if you want to. Uh, note a little bit, right? Add some harsher colors. Neat. We actually got, got pretty far in the study. Okay. Throw in some more saturated, rich oranges right here. Towards the side. Always, always be aware. You might be messing up your value structure. Because it doesn't matter how pretty your colors are. If your values are shit, piece is ruined. So be aware. I'm gonna apply a couple more little notes of, uh, of gray on my nose here. I'll put in that final little whiskers. And then I wanna address the body and then I'm done. I wanna slightly soften up this nose. Did you get a new microphone? Uh, I did not. I might be pointing away though. Sound different? I shouldn't. Sound quality seem a little bit weird for you guys. Can't look at it right after I finish this though. These brights in here. Feels good to me. I was gonna keep here. I love how poofy he is. He's so poofy, my goodness. I'm gonna actually slightly color correct this to a bit more blue because I, I painted them as purple. I thought purple was kind of cool, but I feel like I'd like blue a little bit more than that. Well, that kind of blue. That kind of blue is okay. Nah, purple's fine. Harmonizes better. Oh, well, my first guess. Wrong number. Good, just having dinner with my family. Cool. Here, join us for a study if you have time. Get a bit of that curving in here. I can quickly do this with a bit of airbrushing if I can. It's a little bit of a little bit of something something right there. There we go. Let's put in those little beautiful whiskers. Trick for whiskers always. Sample a local value somewhere and paint with that. Bam, right there. Sample the eyes for this one. Put Bonnie in the chat. Let's get a bunch of bags. I'm just going to assume. There we go. These whiskers. I want to really emphasize the curvature of the uh, of the face with these whiskers. I'm gonna up the highlight as well. I want the highlight to really speak to me. 
There we go. How's it going? How's it going, Bonnie? When did you start drawing digital? Did you paint it on canvas before? I have painted on canvas before, yeah. I started digital a bit after that. But I had done oils and acrylics. Not to any serious degree, though. Uh, I had painted traditionally before I started digital. That was when I was very, very young. Still recommended, by the way. Okay, let's finish this up. So I need to add a bit of ambiguity down here. Just in, in the uh, efforts of completion, right? Remember, this is going to be in cast shadow, so I can't go crazy with this. Cannot go crazy with this. Also, cannot go too hard with this either, because again, edge hierarchy, man, that's the key right now. Gotta maintain edge hierarchy. But yeah, indeed, I did uh, do quite a bit of traditional painting. Never traditionally trained, though. For the note. There's some light areas in there, right? Do we risk painting them? Do we risk it? Come on, then. Look, it's like, it's like, like a storytelling element, maybe. That looks kind of shitty, doesn't it, guys? Come on. Be real here. Bring this little cropping in here. Yeah, this looks terrible. Bring it in here. I do feel like I need a bit of light. That's 45, by the way. That's our time. Uh, I do feel like I need a little bit more light somewhere here, though, because looking way too artificially, uh, artificially lit. I don't like. There you go. Just a little bit here and there. A couple of notes. Suing and going good. Had to repin the thing three times. So you no know, perseverance. You're gonna be fine. So being for the call on Monet. Maybe you should just go there, Bonnie. No, it's gonna take you an hour anyway, right? We copy the selection tool? Yeah, I always copy the selection tool. Okay, this is my study, guys. Hopefully you liked it. Oh, cool, right? I thought this went pretty successfully. I really enjoyed this one. Really fun. Okay, gonna post mine? I encourage you guys to post yours. Save it first. That looks so damn battle hard and it's so mean because of all the hard the hard textures. But yeah, cropping the selection tool is very, very useful. It's just uh, what you do is I can show you in a second once I finish, uh, once I finish uploading this. Where is it? Things? No. Then. Just sorting out things. Can you still hear my clicking, by the way? I have to fix that. Sorry if I was... But I uh, changed the noise gate. Oh, maybe you hear the occasional click, but not too many. Mine's uploaded to the Discord, Polly. Uh, let me show you. So it's uh, it's this. So this is my that's my Discord. This is Twitter window. So it's this. So basically, I, I do a general selection like that, for example, and then I just I hit right click on my pen, and I can just say print selection, and trims. 
So when I want to make a, an easier crop, I just do this. I go all the way down here. I select the square tool. And go like that. I just square it out. And then I just right click turn the selection. That way. <laughs> He's so cute. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Philanders. I appreciate you. Okay, I didn't draw a fox, but a yeti. A yetis are better than foxes. IMO, of course. Foxes are supposed to be cute. I mean, they're cute, but they do smell, so. Monet is ready to pick up. They did find cheat grass. Dude, you were right. Yeah, go ahead, Bonnie. Thanks for stopping by. And hopefully, I'll see you streaming later today. Cheers, Polly. Okay, guys, some of you things to the Discord. Uh, I'll leave you with this screen for a second. Just gonna go switch on a light and grab a coffee because I have a coffee, guys. I'm so excited. I never have coffee in the middle of the stream. Hell yeah. Be right back. I am back. Before we get to the review, Philanders, what have you been up to? Because I've been seeing um, a lot of posts on Instagram and they've been awesome. They've been really good, good work. If you guys are not familiar with Phil uh, Philanders, we don't get her in all that often, but she's a cosplayer and she does a lot of... Um, I don't know if cosplay is the right word, but she uh, she does a whole bunch of things for, for armor and for sewing and for kind of like wardrobe making. I, I, I just lack the proper terminology here. I don't want to sound uh, crude. But a very, very, very talented individual. So go check out her work on Instagram. Post your link, uh, if you're honest. Let the people know what you've been doing. We actually painted her on stream because I was very impressed with her work. And uh, I thought it would look awesome visually. So we did indeed end up painting it. Don't be afraid to just put your uh, social media in there. I want people to have good references to paint. And you, my lady, are absolutely gorgeous. Okay. I'm glad they found it out, uh, Bonnie. And exactly what you said. So kudos to you to figure that out. Okay, let's go to the uh, Discord right now. This is the Discord, welcome. And here we go, the first study. I got my coffee in my hand, I'm gonna take a sip. This is your boy, Eerie. Eerie is a very, very competent painter. Canary fell in the chat. Not bad whatsoever, I think your values are quite strong. Could push the light a little bit harder. The issue with the light is you can make it look even more stronger without changing the value. If you just manipulate the edge, to give a bit more hardness towards that edge, it can make the light look a bit more impactful, right? Same way down here, maybe a little bit of that harsher edge, but that would be nice. But that separation of light and dark is very accurate. I think that's uh, very strongly done. A great job on that, especially for 30 minutes. Pretty good work. Elkin Forest, welcome, dude. I'll upload in a bit, finishing up. No problem, dude, I'll wait for you. Got Marty in here, 45 minutes felt so quick. I wanted another 45. Really have to work on texturing. Don't worry about the texturing. Uh, remember like what I said before, we want to get those accurate blocks of, not accurate per se, but at least our best impression of those blocks of value and then the texture. It's so, so important for the interest of speed that we make things easier for ourselves to see, right? So if we jump to texture before getting that value sorted out, it can lead to paintings that look textured, but if that value is not good enough, the painting itself suffers. So I want you to do that. So if you're ever having a problem with the speed, I don't want to rush you. Because if I rush you, or if you rush yourself, you're not going to get enough out of the study. So treat the study as block studies. So do, do it as a block, a blocky kind of painting. So just block out everything with just harsh, harsh value. And that'll be perfectly fine. A lot of people do this, by the way. So I can show you some examples of people that do this right now. Because we all paint the same references, and we're all at different levels. So in order to kind of combat this, we approach references in a different style, or different ways. For example, like Remy over here is newer to us, so he's kind of blocking things in with flat shapes, not so much with the texture. And conversely, we have in here Wolf Chan, a very experienced artist, going in there with texture, with edge, with simplification, with stylization, all these kind of things, right? So take things simply one step at a time. Because when you paint for time, that doesn't mean just paint as fast as you can, because you don't want to be making mistakes, right? You want to be giving your best impression, right? So it'll tell you if you're doing 
if you're like jumping into one thing over the other it'll tell you if you're like a little bit better at one thing over the other and where you're spending your time so i would really like you to spend a bit more time on those big blocks of value because for, for example i want to really get the impression that the light is coming from this behind top left right and i don't particularly see that as strongly and i don't think that you do either so remember get that dark value across the mouth get that dark value across the side of the head get that super light value over here and really kind of push that read and then only after that do you put that texture on there okay so there'll come a time where you can mix and match this however you want to but i think it'll be a lot more effective these kind of studies will be so much more effective to you because i know you care about learning and i'm i'm, I'm not gonna like pull any punches i'll tell you exactly what you need to do to um that in my impression to get better and that's what i think you should do uh, it's going to be much more effective but great job nonetheless color is very accurate a chimp in here that's actually a fairly accurate face i don't mind that whatsoever let me drink, drink my coffee real quick sorry Definitely get in there. Let me eyeball these valleys real quick. But great job, dude. Thanks for painting along. Also, are you a member of the study squad? Are you not? Ooh, no, now you are. Welcome. Welcome to the golden boys on the Discord. Alright. Not too bad. Not too bad whatsoever. There's an overall gestural mix. See ya, Canary. Thanks so much, dude. Really appreciate you for painting along. Uh, so, there's like an overall gesture thing that I want you to focus on. Uh, chimp which is really important okay and that's kind of this idea it's somewhat okay on my study maybe I slightly elongated it but the idea is gesture being the key word here so the gesture of our work needs to follow the gesture or the basic kind of overall shape of our, uh, of our reference and that's a really important thing to get right so over here for example remember the first the very beginning when I started doing my blocking for this let's look at our lines for a second let's look at my lines for this so this is basically what I was trying to get, right? I was trying to get this little idea, this shape, because I know, because I know your body of work, I know you're good at spotting these kind of things, right? If you're looking for them. But try and look for them more often. Because you see that same kind of gesture over there? That can be a little bit lost. So if this thing becomes a little bit more squished, for instance, if it's drawn like this, you'll immediately jump on it, right? You'll immediately jump on it. You'll say, okay, I know exactly what's wrong here. I drew this a bit too low. So think about things in that term, because overall I have no issue with the placement of the shapes on your blocking. I do have an issue with the overall gesture, the overall like, basic shape of your blocking though. Because that seems to be a bit lost. I think it's being a little bit too punched down. And this is usually, and correct me if I'm wrong here, but it's usually a side effect of painting too closely to the canvas, having it way too zoomed in. So keeping things out, remember I did the entire painting from this much of a distance. Maybe I did a bit of eyes, maybe this close. But most of the painting was back all the way out here. Right? So, if you're doing that, maybe it's a good way of avoiding it. And also, don't be afraid of spending a bit more time on those basic shapes. But your actual blocking, I think, is fine. And your uh, separation of light and dark, not too bad at all. I've got a little bit lighter over here. Even though this area is graphically darker than this area over here. Just because it's darker doesn't mean it goes completely dark. It's still an area in the light. You're going to have a bit more light in here. So, you're thinking exactly in the right way about this, right? You're actually, your mind's in exactly the right place. It just needs to arrange things a little bit better. In a sense that... So this is a very accurate thing, I think a very, a very good thing that you've done, and I'm happy to see it. So right over here, check the value right there, right? You see that little bit of a jump right there? Even though these, these both these values are subject to the exact same amount of light, the same lighting condition. Because this is dark and this is light in general, in terms of local color, this is going to get more blown out for light, this is going to get less blown out for light. But however, just because it's less blown out doesn't mean it can go into a dark, because this should still read as a lighter version of this. Which is why, even though this is a light, or this is a darker than this, it still maintains some amount of lightness. So there is a difference in value, but not so much so to make this look like it's in the dark. Because you want to get that clear impression of, oh, light coming from this way. That's the idea. Remember, the lights need to be clear on a pic. The lights are clear, your piece is going to be successful. I'd like to get a bit more clarity right there, okay? Got mine in here. Not too bad. A uh, bit, bit too harsh in a certain certain number of things, right, in this, in the study. A little bit too harsh. I think I would like to have just a little bit more control. Especially, I think I straightened this up, you know? I straightened this up a bit too much. This nose. There's a little bit of a left shift that I didn't notice initially. I have a very strong inclination to do this in all the studies, especially if I don't spend time in the proportional stage. And I would like to get better at it, so... In the future when i do this kind of thing i really want to get more of that tilt in there because i do tend to straighten things out i don't like it too much and as far as the overall color goes 
Uh, not too bad. I think it's a fair interpretation. I think I did oversaturate a few places. Maybe here. And he this is okay. This over here is a bit too overstated. That orange is a bit too strong. I think it kills some of the subtlety. I think I would like, like to have taken the saturation from this area and added more of a stronger idea over here near the eyes. I think that would have been cooler and would make for a more effective piece because we want the most important information to go right here, right? We got glow in here. Not too bad. Yeti Fox, I promise you can do better. That's what, what happens when you sleep four hours or less for several days. Get your sleep, dude. Get your sleep. But don't feel rushed to jump immediately in here. I want you to focus on some very very fundamental aspects right because I, I totally get the variance it's, it's completely possible and i know how good, good of an artist you are you see you don't have to prove anything with the speed so if you feel a little bit worse for wear for the day don't challenge yourself with too much because you still want to be making progress so oftentimes when i'm completely sleep deprived i try and do certain things and then i have to take a step back and think wait a second i am not operating at op op optimal levels so maybe i don't want to do something so complex so stick with lines or stick with the block and just keep things nice and basic for yourself don't make it too complex because you still want to be able to get work done even when you don't feel like getting work done so kind of appropriate the work in a manner that lets you still be effective but i think it's overall the the lighting condition is okay the proportion are a little bit off uh these distances are okay it's just the distance around there and the lighting on the nose that's kind of throwing a bit off if you want to crit on this i will give you one but uh yeah that's the suggestion i would give based on the study but thanks so much for painting along i think uh, the colors themselves yeah, I could, I, we could easily draw the picture with these colors. I think the colors are perfectly fine. And the values as well. Maybe a little bit too light uh, or too dark over here. And a bit... The, the dark seem fine. I think the colors seem fine. But um, yeah, just a bit more effective effective use of shape, of shape and proportion. My goodness. Just a bit more of an effective use of shape and proportion. And you'll be well on your way to a great piece. Thanks for painting along. Great job, guys. What's up, John? Why not go to Angie stream? She's cool. Invite me to do sketch portraits. Hers looks so cool. Mine looks just mad and she uses fewer values. It's not too bad. Honestly, it's not too bad whatsoever. But realize that um, when you simplify something, John, it's not a question of having an easier work Get out for you. Like, it's, it's not easier to simplify. Simplifying is harder than it is to draw everything. And this is almost evident by... Look at any sketchbook progression by a great artist. I encourage you to do so because it'll put a lot of things into perspective for you in your own journey. So if you have any sketchbook journey things you can look at, do so. But the idea is this. Let's say that I wanted to paint the idea of the human body, right? So this is the level, basically, of how it goes. The first person, the first time anybody will draw a body perfectly, it'll be like something like this, where they'll draw every single aspect, right? So they'll start right there, they'll put the separation in there, they'll draw like the head, and they'll measure out like the distances over here, they'll say, okay, there's a half a head down, a full head down, a full head down, a full head down, and they'll say, okay, the pec connects over there to the shoulder, the shoulder comes out there, and they'll do this very, very intricate little, little drawing, right? Everything, everything is perfectly, perfectly drawn out. But here's the thing with that. But everything is overly stated. It doesn't necessarily make for a good painting. It makes for an accurate painting, but not a good one. So you've got to be a little bit aware of that. So that's like stage one of most people's drawing adventure when it comes to perfect anatomy, right? They start like this. And everything is super, super overstated. And it becomes harder to control everything. But it becomes easier to control, but it becomes harder to kind of draw something that's decent from this. Because everything is just so heavily out there that it becomes problematic, right? So what's the next stage in this? And what's the next stage in this whole process? Well, that's when you get a bit looser with it and you say okay well let's add some dynamism over there you know let's add some dynamism we'll add maybe the same kind of structure here so the structure kind of follows like this but now everything's going to skew it a bit more right so now we have these these overall ideas of oh well maybe this is pointing right there and i have this sort of curve here but there's a next kind of level to that right so it's still kind of construction based but it's heavily got to do with a lot of dynamism coming from the gesture, right? So it's a bit looser than the previous one, but still rather rigid once you put everything on there. Because once I figure out where the shoulder goes, I figure out where the arm goes like that. Right? The whole story. We've been here a thousand times. Set of idea. The nice and easy, nice, nice, easy basic slopes like there. Set of idea, right? And we're used to this kind of idea. 
That's step number two. And then step number three is we just go absolutely, absolutely insane. Some sick lads? No, the lads start from here. This is the side of the body. That's accurate. And then you go even more crazy, right? So you don't want to do anything. You just start from just basic force lines and you go like that. And you kind of draw the entire drawing from here, right? So these are like levels that you will find people drawing at. And then from, from here you can kind of develop really, really cool kind of drawings. Like super, super expressive work. Yeah. But you'll see something very clearly happening over here in, in all these studies, right? You'll see something very clearly happening. What's happening here is that the number of lines that I'm overall using for these drawings, they dramatically decrease, right? actually decreased severely because I put in more information here of course so the amount of like rigid construction lines what were those lines you put at the start pretty poke this is general like force lines so if you study force lines I think that's what but like the amount of lines ultimately coming into this drawing is so much less than this but it takes so much more experience to do this than to do this, to do this. this is very easy which is why it, it's I can do it super quickly because I've done this a thousand times right I've drawn I've drawn males from this angle so many fucking times that I can, I can just basically do this almost with my eyes closed right but I, this is what i'm right now working with which is why like it's, it's a bit less controlled but i've been working on it right and the idea is is that once you're comfortable with everything you're able to keep things really nicely nicely lit and the, the thing is this this amount of experience when it, when it goes all the way here the amount of construction gets rapidly decreased but your information that comes from construction it's demanded over here you need to have that information over here but it makes some sense the same idea goes for painting noses right you saw the nose like this, for example, then you progress to a nose that looks like this, for example. A bit more complicated. Then you go to a nose that looks like this, for example. And you have all the planes in there. You understand front plane, side plane, bottom plane, all this whole, this whole spiel. What's funny is once you get to this stage, you'll see oftentimes it becomes so much more simpler after that. This is how people draw notes after that stage sometimes. Right? Because ultimately it's only what's useful to you that matters. And that's simplification. But you can't do this without doing this without doing this. Right? That's kind of idea. Because whenever you do this, and whenever you do this, I mean this leads you over here, and this leads you to think about small little subtle changes that's important. Something as simple as, let's say if you're drawing an arm directly from simplification, then doing this, for example, this could be one idea of an arm, but here's an idea of experience, right? Doing this. Small, subtle change that cr that changes everything. Because when you put that T-line in here, it looks like there's a bicep that's supposed to go there. And that's like the foundational idea of simplification, which is you put in just enough there, using very little, to indicate exactly what's supposed to go there. Because I could draw the entire bicep out like this, right? I can draw a very overt bicep like this. Keep everything really, really rigid. But there's no point, because if I can just do this, then it serves my purpose better. If I can just do two lines that look like that immediately, without any construction, it's far superior. Notes about simplification. Simplification is harder, because it requires you to do all the initial steps. So, you'll get there. But learn to just paint it the, the rough way first, because you can't, you can't just learn to simplify. Because what are you simplifying? Like, you're not simplifying anything, because you don't know exactly what's supposed to go there. notes about that okay let's get rid of this binding you this is the next portrait shall we or the next uh, painting it's gonna be an armor study nice and fun shall we do this in heavy paint nah it's gonna take me too much time <laughs> I don't want to heavy paint live on stream That'll be terrible. Get a little water. I don't know if this is micro poly, but I thought about it. It might be. 
<laughs> do it now. I simply a simple can't. Wait, why not? Uh, by the way, Heavy Paint has a mixer and an eyedropper too. Heavy Paint has an eyedropper too. Where's the eyedropper tool in Heavy Paint? I was just manually mixing every color. Like I did this study in Heavy Paint. Show you guys. I did my night study in Heavy Paint. E, really? The guest, the magical, magical letter. E. You guys want to see my night Heavy Paint? Hold on, I'll get, I'll get you. Yeah, uh, I recorded it for a test. I'm on YouTube, by the way, if you're sub to me there. Happening. Night boy. <laughs> oh look, this is my uh, my study of uh, of James and and Beastie. I don't know how much I recorded of this, but it, that was a really fun painting. I really enjoyed that. Leaked, by the way. <laughs> that was a really fun painting. That's from a while ago as well. So many months ago. Alright, let me finish all my coffee and we can get started. How would you do the gesture for this one? Uh, I'll show you. It's like this, basically. So you're kind of evalu evaluating that overall. It's almost like the shape association thing we talked about earlier. But this is what I'm looking for in this piece. So everything is somewhat straight up with the, it's supposed uh, by himself, right? This much. Right? So it's a little bit uh, towards, it's skewed a bit towards the left, that's fine. So what I'm mainly concerned with is one, the, the gesture of his shoulder goes like that, right? Maybe not as, as crazy as that, just that. And then the big one, right? The big one is a thickness. So we have a taper like that, and we have a taper that's almost parallel to it, but a little bit less than that, so slightly outside taper. Maintaining this distance over here, so meaning that shape is going to be the most important thing. Because what I'm drawing over there is, is this idea. As long as these shapes are comparable, it's all fine. You see, I'm going a little bit wrong there, because this this should one of them should be a little bit further away from the other. So maybe this should be the shape. So if I maintain this whole idea, if I maintain that idea throughout the piece, that's what I'm looking for in my block in. So all my lines are going to be to try and find that distance, because once I can once I get that shape, this is why it's so important, because once I get those boundary conditions, then doing everything with halves and quarters is so so quick. Because I can just divide this into almost thirds, I can get one, two, and three, and then I have the distance that goes into his plate, right? And I have the distance that goes into this right plate, and then I have this little area that goes into his head. That's why it's so important. Right? And everything is kept in good proportion with each other. So boundary condition should be the first thing you always look for. I can half this, half it over there, I can get the distance for his arm right there. I can half this over here, right there, I can get where his arm comes from over there comes outward right there. I'm not saying this is perfect because I'm doing it very quickly, but it is quite reliable. So I can draw plumb lines over there, get that distance right there, other distance right there underneath it. Now again, same thing over here, right? So right, right halfway through this is where the sword comes up. So I'm going to say the sword comes out over here. And it's about that distance away from the face, using a negative space. So using this, you can kind of build up a coordination with your entire piece. You kind of get your proportions really, really quickly. That right there is the key. And it's not just the outside plane, right? Because there's a bunch of inside planes as well. For example, over here, you see this little rectangle over there? That's what I'm looking for. So I'll, I'll draw the rectangle out over here, let's say. And when I draw it out here, it seems a bit too a bit too thin, right? It's a bit thicker, if you evaluate that raw shape. 
I'll make it a bit more thicker, which means that this little thing towards the left kind of goes a little bit more towards the left, so I get a bit, bit more space in there. So this way I can verify again and again all my measurements. Same thing goes over here. So I think look at the largest ones first, but beyond that, I think about the smaller ones. For example, this little shape, I can evaluate that shape is using just a pure shape. Just this, right? Just a bell shape. Does that look accurate to you? Looks accurate to me. Maybe a little bit higher than that, but it looks accurate enough. So basically that's what I'm looking for. Because if I can get the overall rough kind of read looking the same, then I know that any sort of correction is going to be small. But if it doesn't read well at the super basic stage, this might be too long, by the way. But if it doesn't read well on this basic level, it's never going to read well. Right? So if I wanted to read very quickly at the basic level, I just think about it as a very, very simplified version of itself. And I paint that simplified version in. At least I block it in, right? I may not paint it because I might add specific lines after that. But in my blocking, all the time you'll see lines like that. Right? So in the initial, just a triangle right there. Not even the triangle, you know, but at the beginning, like, where did I start here? I started right here, right? With that square right there. The square right here. I started right like that on the space. I got that, that halfway measurement. I think about halves and quarters and all those things. That's the idea. So you get that overall movement and the overall distances, the shapes, and then you kind of half and quarter. So when you half and quarter, realize what, what you're doing there. So when you half things, when you quarter things, you're using the piece itself as a metric for measurement. And that's the most powerful thing, right? It's almost like measuring based on heads, but you're measuring based on everything. But it's a bit more of an advanced thing on top of that. So that's the idea. What is she doing? Better edges, I'm assuming. Look at yours. It's not just better, it's it's more shape. Her shapes are just way better than yours. Uh, and I think that should be evaluated, right? Because your shapes are very unsure of themselves in your value structure. First of all, just stick to two values. Don't overcomplicate it. Stick to two values. And then focus just purely on that shape idea. Because all, all of these pictures, they work without any edges whatsoever. They work quite strongly without any edges. What's really doing it for these, uh, these little paintings over here is just very, very good shape application. Like the shapes are super evocative. And just good drawing in general. Like even removing all the shapes on the inside contours, the outside contours are, are perfectly fine, right? They're very good. The main difference I see is texture. The gradients can be more easily made with pressure. Well, that's not the main difference that I see. The main difference that I see is just the drawing. Overall, the outside contours are better and the shapes are better designed. Because I wouldn't say show sure, difference-wise in terms of overall feel. Texture is important, but all of these paintings work, work just as well with flat value look 100% different? I tend to disagree. I, they'll look different in terms of read, but they'll still look like, like great paintings. That's the point, right? They'll still look like excellent paintings, regardless of the uh, of the texture. And that's the point of texture, right? Texture doesn't change the painting. It changes the feel of the painting, but it doesn't change the painting itself. I mean, we can test this out. Like with this one? Wait, two faces for the, for the face? Yeah, of course. I mean, have you not seen my, my silhouettes? You don't need that many values. This becomes much more simplified, but if I do this, for example... Like right there. It's hard to do when it's just low quality. Much happy with my first sketches than when I move on to something more final. Wait, what do you mean, Polly? Do this really, really quickly. Let's read the point.
Maybe not super strictly. Just two values, John. But like, you should probably only have two values in your palette, right? That you're using. So maybe just use X and then have so just this, for example. So if I go, if I just keep pressing X, I get the two values that I use. Kind of idea. And you can do some blending in there with brush pressure. This kind of idea, right? I mean, the whole painting is still holding without any texture. Because we've done paintings without texture as well, right? I mean, you know it works. But if you blend two values, it's not two values. Now you're misinterpreting the idea of two values. Two values means you have two values in your palette. If you want to mix a little bit, sure, but... I mean, you don't want to have a great range on your painting. Right? You don't have a great range in your painting, you don't have a, have a bunch of values in your face. But having these, these edges over there, that's perfectly fine. Having soft or hard edges, you can do that. That's perfectly fine. I don't really count edges as, as actual values. Because when I talk about value, I talk about the block, right? When I talk about the edge. Like if I have a, a, a dark transitioning into a light like this. Like if I have this on my painting, do I really consider this over here as a, as a value? This a value on itself? Not really. Not in the, the definition that we give it, right? Because when we talk about realism, you break up edge and shape. Yeah, that's why. You see, the read is overall the same. This and that. Still a very strong face, right? Kind of idea. That's just good shape. And we know this works, right? Might just be proportion, you sly devil. <laughs> you sly devil. No, but I mean, we know this works. It's not impossible because any face can be painted. I mean, not any face. Uh, it can be. It can be drawn, for, of course, but painted. Uh, most likely, just about anything can be painted with just two to three values. Yeah. The reason I can tell you this is because it's true. Uh, even in nature, when it comes to simplification, I can give. I can show you any reference, for example. Like, let's bring a reference out here. Grab like a girl or something. And this might be a great exercise to do, by the way. Random picture of a girl, right? Let's make this into a two value study. Be simple. Just have to shift the levels up. There, bam. Two values. Face. Right? So if you can draw this, then you can draw the face. Let me soften the read up a little bit. Do this. There you go. So that, that itself like tells me that it's possible, right? Because as long as your shapes are good, as long as your drawing and proportion is good, it should be all manageable. So this is the attempt, is, because this is how most of Angebear's studies do look, right? With these kind of simplified unified shadows with very, very strong sense of shape. So most of your struggles are going to be to try and find exactly how the shape occurs on your canvas, which means that you're going to be doing a bunch of this, right? Like you'll start right here, for example, you start with the high amount of uh, simplification. And then your goal is to kind of get this line to kind of read just like that. Be able to get the shape evocative enough to look at the nose. And it's a lot of subtlety involved right there. Like for instance, this the way that this shadow curves around here. You draw this straight, for example. You see how that kind of ruins the read? The subtlety is immense. Right? Really, really important. Same thing happens here. If I square this out, you know, the lip doesn't read as well as it, it, as it does usually, right? Because it needs to curve out. Same thing over here. If I keep this too sharp. It flattens everything out, right? Kind of idea. But when things curve around, it evokes form more. Sounds cool, though. Looks cool in the face. I might do this for soft lighting to figure out how to do it automatically. I don't know if soft lighting is the best to do it. Soft lighting is always hard to paint in general because the shapes aren't going to be as strong. So when things are flatly lit, it makes for a, for a much more difficult thing to do. But like I said, every painting should be possible just like this. So. If you're wondering what I did 
to separate out into two, into two values. It's a simple threshold filter. I can do it again for you. Batsky, how's it going, dude? This is this. So just go to, I'll show you my creator window. So right here. So it's just filter, adjust threshold. Oh, there goes my reference. Where'd it go? Come back to me. Good to have you in your Batsky. Sick piece, by the way, on the Instagram, the recent one with the girl in the hair. Beautiful, beautiful work. The warm and cool study. Fantastic work. Follow Batsky, killer painter. Here we go. The filter adjusts threshold. Just the threshold a little bit. And so we start to get that read, right? Yeah. That's sufficient for us to tell us the, the, the face over here, right? It's sufficient information. But see, the more flatly lit things are, the less actual structure you'll see on the face. Because that's sufficient for the read. And I'll show you, like, a lot of my uh, my silhouettes that I do for my portfolio, those are also kind of flat. Because the references that I bash them from are also flat references. I bash them more for the shapes than I bash them for the uh, faces. I'll show you any of these. Like, let's look at the uh, these over here. Like some character design stuff. Like, look at, the, look at the faces over here. Like, they're super, super basic, but they still read as faces, right? That's basically what I want to try and go for. Beacons of ideas. The same thing goes with the females, or for any of the uh, vehicles, don't really matter because right, at all. That page is actually unfinished. This is the finished page. My shapes might be bad, I can see what's wrong now. Cool. Yeah, with this kind of idea. We're doing women, right? So women over here. Yeah, these kinds of faces, right? They're super, super simplified. Stuff like that. You don't need that much more to read. Especially in two values. And I these are silhouettes, right? So I have to do it with... Uh, with... And some of them I don't even draw a face at all. Dude, I gotta do orthographics of these this week, and it's gonna be so much time. I don't have to spend so much time on that. Look at those. They're five minutes each. These are all... This entire page was done in an R. Probably do them quicker. I don't know what I'm doing. Simplified? Yeah, thanks, Batsky. That's, uh, those are, those are, um, silhouettes for portfolio stuff. I gotta refine them tonight. Is, uh, let me tell you what the problem is right now. It's the problem is this, this character over here, uh, is, I only recently arrived at a theme for her, but she used to be this girl that had, like, robot arms, which is very generic, but now I'm changing the entire theme of my story to be this, like, cyber Christian versus, like, Mongolian monks, I guess? That I use magic or whatever. It's just a very super generic thing, but I need something for the portfolio. Uh, but I've recently come come to uh, be. I, I want this girl to look like a nun right now. I want it to look like a super like uber nun. And uh, I got to do a lot of silhouettes again. Got to refine the idea. That's gonna be fun though. I actually have a, a shit ton of nun references right now to go. Dude, this is weird though. Every time I kind of. I don't know what's happening to my computer, but every time I save a bunch of references to a folder, they just completely vanish. Like I'm looking right now on my desktop, and I'm supposed to have a full folder full of nuns, and it's just completely gone. Am I accidentally clicking and dragging things, I wonder? Five minutes, but you have to understand how bashed this is, right? Like, uh, well, not all of it's bashed. Uh, almost none of it's bashed, actually. The face is bashed, and the shape is bashed, but everything else is painted. But it's, it's easier than you think. The silhouette face can be endless. I find that to be torture. Yeah, no, no shit, dude. Like it's it's so annoying sometimes. But at least now that I have an idea, it's it's better because you see that there's nothing similar, which is a crit that I got from my mentor. There's nothing similar. Like these characters look like they belong to like different universes. So now that I actually have an idea, it should be better. Like this one, like these ones are so much more unified. Up here, Let me... these ones make so much more sense because these are all like, oh, it's a cloth dude that has a hood and he looks a little bit like. Islamic, I guess, right? That's somewhat unified. But this one's like completely out of the... I had no idea what I was doing. 
What was really fun un unexpectedly was the vehicles, because I had never done vehicles before for silhouettes. And it was really, really fun, dude. Like I really enjoyed doing this. I'm I'm really uh, I'm really terrible at, at vehicle silhouettes, but I gotta do a bunch of creatures for it. <laughs> it was just so much fun. Out of the, all, of, all of these, I think my favorite one is, is this one, this little boy over here. Fun stuff. Anyway. Was that the King Arthur thing? I had to do a lot of that during an art competition I did. Very fun. Very cool. Yeah, so I've been reading a lot about lore for uh, for you know, the Crusade and stuff like that. Because this this dude that I that I bashed in... Right, I saluted this guy a while ago. We actually did a painting of him. He's actually going to be part of my story now. I thought he was way too cool to just dismiss because I loved his design. But this dude's actually going to be a part of our, uh, our little universe. The art war? Neat. You guys remember this painting? You can do a full painting of this dude. Where is that? It's kind of neat, right? So shiny. So it's because of characters like this that we even do the armor studies, right? So this information goes directly into this little painting right here. My King Arthur stuff was trash. I had a week to do everything that it would have taken me a month. But that's all right. Fine. Race is enjoyable. I don't really care to steal away for myself because I consider it unneeded. Yeah, I mean, you don't have to. I think if you, um, it depends on everybody's process, right? Like, uh, we can, the thing about art in general and arriving at a conclusion is that there's so many right ways. Like Craig Mullins would say, for every example, there's a counterexample, right? So, like I've seen Ahmed Alduri do concept thing and he likes to do it like he does it with the sketchbook. I've seen artists do silhouettes, you know, just they develop each silhouette for hours together. You know, they keep doing permutation the same one over and over again on the same silhouette. I've seen people just pump out hundreds every hour. And then like develop them is whatever like suits your goals i guess and makes you more effective because that's what art is ultimately nobody gives a shit how you arrived at the painting as long as the painting is good and that's not, that's what i think about as long as it's not hurting anybody or whatever it's fine which is why everything goes especially in a professional environment right the only thing that really matters is the deadline and keeping things legal To find my art war three stuff, they're back in November. Cool. I am, I am a professional environment. <laughs> that is the goal, yes, sir. To elaborate, it feels like silhouetting is born from skillful huntsman mantra of dealing with indecisive art directors. Yeah, no shit, right? The process is strong and much needed in art in general. Yeah, having that structure is a good idea always. If you guys are just jumping in here, we're about to begin our second study of the day. Let me just quickly show you what we've been doing so far. Whoops, that's the wrong screen. Um, we just did this fox study. We pitched in, and you all did a pretty goddamn good job. That's mine right there. Look at him, he's so happy. So happy to be here. All right, study number two, reference on the Discord in the appropriate channel. I encourage you to join me. Real quick. All right, let's begin. Three, two, one, and reset. 45 minutes on the clock. The first thing I'm going to do is just get a simple little breakdown of the lights with the shadows in this piece. A couple of lines right there. One, two, three, and we are done. Higher over here. I want to have a somewhat strong separation of foreground background here. So I'm going to go back there with a single stroke. Throw in a bunch of light. That's all I need to do over there. I'll prime this with a bit of warmness. It is somewhat cooler, but I can establish the cooler later. I don't have to do it right now. Perfectly fine. Like a lot of what Paul Richards has to say in regards to design. I'm not familiar with his work. You can link some stuff on my Discord if you'd like. I always look at, like looking at new artists. There's so many of them, right? So many incredible artists out there. It is both extremely, extremely motivating and also extremely challenging. Do you normally start with a gray background? No, actually never. I never start with a gray background. And this background isn't uh, gray. It's like very desaturated, I guess. Kind of gives me a push and pull right there. But I'm not trying to develop the background right now, more than I'm just trying to get something to kind of paint over. And that's it, actually. That's it for my uh, my background priming. 
It's almost like thinking about applying like an ochre or whatever to your canvas before you start doing your lines. Because I want something over there. I don't like painting on a dead canvas. kind of annoys me. Because I want there to be some life, you know? It's like a personal thing, I guess. Look at that overall gesture of the lines, of the entire body over there. I'm mildly desaturated my lines right there. Okay, so now we have to evaluate some general ideas with the proportions. Therefore, let's get that shoulder line in there. Nice and strong. Okay, now I'm gonna do a few major, major things. I can I can draw that line out for the head, but I don't want to right now. We can just do it for the shoulder. Get this one straight line there for the that shoulder over there. And now I'm gonna evaluate that overall distance of that very large little rectangle that's formed there between this little arm plate and that little arm plate over there. The idea. So get the overall nice long rectangle in there. And then if I can evaluate that shape really quickly, I think that looks appropriate enough. Then from there, we're going to get this left side of the face real quick. Right side. Get that over there, looking nice and pretty. Get that central rectangle in there. This all can almost be divided into thirds. We already did this earlier. Divided that into thirds. Slight little extension right there. Get a bit more of the blocks right there. I didn't like the art too much, but to be fair, the book is a bit old. Some books are just a little bit dated in their information, I find. Like, um, I've talked about this before, but the animator's guide or the animator bible or whatever, written by the dude that did the animation for Roger Rabbit. I think that information is a little bit iffy sometimes, especially in regards to like some best practices that he believes. But who knows, dude. Maybe he's right and maybe I'm wrong. But ultimately, I know one thing for certain, which is this no Especially art-wise. There's too many counterexamples, which is unfortunate. Uh, unfortunate, because I don't like counterexamples personally. If there's one right way of doing something, I would feel a lot better about myself because I would be like, okay, let's just do the right way of doing things and we're fine. We're done. Unfortunately, things aren't that simple. And which is also a good thing because that means no matter how you like drawing, there's always going to be something out there for you, which is great. That's great news. Richard Williams is a hardcore traditional type person. There you go, Richard Williams, that's his name. I like his stubbornness. You can respect it, right? For some reason, I'm one of those kind of people that if somebody doesn't back down and apologize, like I hate it when somebody accuses people of just stupid shit these days and they're like, oh, I'd, like to, I'd like to issue a formal apology, I didn't mean to offend anybody, it's like bullshit, don't back down. I almost respect people for not backing down. That right shoulder in there. The overall gesture of the hand goes like that. I'm kind of looking for that negative shape in here. There's some amount of coordination between the pieces. I like to draw this with a lot of, lot of straights, sometimes I'll, I'll throw a curve in there. But straights are just easier to control, IMO. They are easier to control. Anybody here that's better at evaluating curves than straights? I'm sure there's at least one or two free. Like Canvas likes to do it. <laughs> canvas, honestly, one of the weirdest things that I've ever had to see was the way that you uh, did that proportional study for the Blade Runner when we were doing scene studies. You did that, that, that gesture study for the um, for the Blade Runner movie. That was so incredibly, like, <laughs> it, was, it wasn't weird. Okay, it was weird, but it was also kind of cool to see. Because I've never seen anybody do measurement with uh, with gesture lines like that. So, a sight to behold, to be sure. He does the skill, he has the skill and just does his own thing to a fault, perhaps. The draftsman in Thief and the Cobbler is crazy. Yeah, no kidding, right? It's pretty incredible. But then, like, you have, like, the same thing goes for, like, the whole idea of, like, oh, I like traditional animation. Okay, well, that's okay. Traditional animation is really cool. But at the same time, do you like artists just slogging away again and again for hours on end to produce a product? Like, traditional animated stuff takes so much goddamn time. Like, are you gonna make old Nathan Fox sit there on his table and grow older quicker just because you want a fucking traditionally animated Disney movie or a DreamWorks film? Like, come on. Nobody wants to see that. Cost to all these things. A slightly fix that rotation. My goodness, I'm sitting at such an angle to my uh, my display tablet. There we go. Rotation fixed. Overall lines in here. Remember, I'm just doing a block in. I'm not interested in line out right now because again, my focus with these studies right now is just the painting aspect of it, and just because I want to paint it, I just want to get to that painting stage as quickly as possible. That with that regard, I just jump right after I finish my block and directly into the painting. Get that overall gesture sorted out. Oh, 
how does like Yoshinari Yo can churn out so many keyframes? It's it's, it's so impressive, right? And the uh, even though it's like it's hellish, it's a nightmare landscape to think about. Still gotta respect people that do it, right? One of the most impressive things that I've ever heard in a movie that not many people like is Chappie. The animators for Chappie had to hand animate or hand key everything. Like they had to key out the actor, Shalto Copley. They had to remove him from every scene and then eye track or hand track everything in the entire movie. How insane must that have been? They had no tracking technology. Almost nothing, I don't think. I don't think they had any tracking technology in the entire film. And they had to do the entire tracking by eye. Like how horrible must that have been? Yeah, it's the Corridor Digital movie. Sorry, the Corridor Digital channel. And I think traditionally animated movie, I think that a movie that isn't CGI. And that traditionally animated means that the, the frames have been drawn, have been drawn out. Is OG that worked on the Boondocks and his work is literally some of the best line work I've ever seen. That's kind of funny you say that because on production like South Park and Archer, for example, the artist might seem a little bit, the artist might, might seem a little bit rudimentary, but if you evaluate the actual portfolios of the people that get into South Park, their animation resume is insane. It's ridiculous. They're so fucking good. Have to be, right? Meanwhile, Matt and Trey Parker... I'm, I'm sure Matt and Trey Parker are great animators, right? And they're, they're great people, but like... But I doubt they can animate half as good as the people they hire. I watched Korda crew explain that about Chappie. Yeah, how cool is that, right? I don't know. Okay, that's my blocking, by the way. I don't need much more. Can I get a bit of uh, base stuff for this dude? Get that traditional. He's got a seven head going on there, but it's fine. He looks great. Get that little eye right there. A little nose right there. Get that Loomis measurement out there. That's what we really want. Up over the chin. Get that just basic breakdown right there. I know that I'm triggering people by having that line in the middle, but don't worry. All makes sense. Madhouse hire Freya? Ma I've heard a lot of good things about Madhouse. I don't think I'm too crazy into the animation scene though. Though a lot of good artists come from there, right? Like Aaron Blaze comes from animation, Nathan Fox comes from animation, your boy Dave Greco Art comes from animation, because Dave went to college for animation. He went to, uh, where did he go to? I don't remember. He didn't go to Art Center, he went somewhere else. Or did he go to Art Center? I don't remember. But, um, yeah, Dave Rickard, one of the greatest artists, dude. He's so goddamn good. He streams on Twitch. Go follow him. Also follow Basky Star Man. Rick somewhere in the chat. Also an incredible artist. Always on that grind. I want to add some curves right now, just for information's sake. Nine minutes into the study. Going just about peachy clean. Just fine. I think animation and comics are some of the best things to learn for us raw, raw drawing skills. It covers so many bases and it demands so much knowledge, right? Because in order to animate something, you need to have such a crazy understanding of it. To be able to, to, just turning a form, for example, like how hard is turning a form for any of us? It's not a trivial thing, I don't think. Just like rotating something three, like how much, how many things can we really rotate in our minds? Like how many complex objects? I can rotate a person, specifically a male. I can rotate a male in any, any angle and draw him effectively. Female also to a certain degree, but probably not going to look as attractive as I wanted to. Um, maybe line heads I can do from any angle. Uh, what else? Like nothing, I can't think of anything else, honestly. I can draw armor, I guess, from any angle. Some armor sets, maybe, that I've studied. But beyond that, not that much. But then, here comes Aaron Blaze, and he can draw basically any animal from memory. Right? All the information. Insane. Need to understand the scenes and forms exactly, right? A lot can get filled in by halving, draw your start in between and onions in between. Yeah, but then you still need to know the uh between, right? And what happens if things end up at the at the three-fourth stage, right? Add a bit of a base color to this, just a neutral grey. Or neutral blue maybe. Same idea as applies as earlier. The idea that we just want to prevent this background color from bleeding into my piece. They trained for it from day one, though. 
You'd be surprised how many animators are just not that good, but uh, I mean, the best ones, of course, are, but you'd be surprised as, as how many don't actually have good drawing skill. Like, Blaze and I think Fox talk about it all the time. Like, the reason that they got hired was because they were good artists, and they realized back in their day or whatever that it was way easier to teach an artist to animate than to teach an animator to draw. Makes sense, right? Not saying everyone succeeds at it. Might also be how we get math and background painters. Math painting isn't easy. Got mad respect for for uh, good math painters. Like uh, your boy, our boy rather. Uh, not a campus engineer. <laughs> What's his name? Oh goodness, not land shaper. Who is the background artist that comes here? Junkbrush. Junkbrush is a fucking phenomenal artist, dude. That dude, he's a he's, he has mad flexing power. He has crazy flexing power because he'll he'll whip out a really accurate like background, but then he'll be like, hey, can, hey, do you want to paint some uh, paint some characters with us? Because you think he'll catch him off guard, right? You think he'll catch him off guard because he's a background artist, and then boom, he fucking hits your ass with like a perfect proportions because that dude's got monstrous skill. Junkbrush is a really good artist. Comes in here every now and again because he's mad busy, but we love him. Evan Earl? What is he worked on, Elena? I'm not familiar with the name. There's some some brown that's in here, right? So you gotta get some brown. To get some healthy brown in everything. Sleeping Beauty, no shit. Okay. Let's start this little show. Let's get the show on the road. We'll get some base value in here just so things kinda of live in their own little world to begin with. And then beyond that, let's just throw in some of these occlusions, because I want to get a good a good read on this armor. Awesome occlusion in here. So I can do this multiple ways. Usually I throw some texture on there first, but I can start this with a bit of occlusion. Because now I have everything kind of formed out, right, on the body. As long as I pick my dark value appropriately, I'll save myself a bunch of time right now. These occlusions are really what's going to give us a bunch of that form. What is the color of the day? The entire painting is lit, lit by diffused light from the sky, as well as a bit of a rim light from the sun on the left side, and also a bunch of reflected from the ground. So we shall choose, given that it is indeed blue diffuse. I'll choose. Uh, I still have to pick a blue because the armor is cool local color. But I can choose a bit less of a blue. Let's pick, uh, let's pick this color over here. Because remember, the idea of warm lights, cool shadow is an intense simplification, and I encourage you guys to explore. What it is, why that is in some certain cases, and why it won't be in certain other cases. Good to think about, right? Because it's a very good rule to have because it gets you thinking about warm and cool. But uh, again, don't use it as a crux. Okay, and it gets an impression on the light here on the piece. Some tiny impressions. The overall dif difference in separation of light and dark in this piece isn't that great. But it is there. Instead of applying that a little bit here and there on the piece. Overall initial impression of it. Lighting indeed coming from well basically all sides. Is the the sky, the hemisphere of the sky surrounding it, but it's being obstructed by a little bit of these trees around. But we can start spraying this value. Find some good homes for these uh, values over here. Background artists like Paul, Felix, and <laughs> Luke Desmarsh here, and Marshallier. I know, I know Paul Felix, I don't know the second name. I feel that did the matte paintings on the original Star Wars films, those people are no joke, but also no names. Dude, Craig Mullins is a big amount of, of uh, paints himself. Boy, Craig Mullins. Remember, grades are so important, dude. Don't forget your grades in a painting. I think grades are awful, but... Raise in correlation with everything else. This looks so goddamn. I get enough of them. So beautiful. Is that all the praise? You're hard pressed to make a production work without matte painters and photo bashing. That's why it's so important in the industry. I mean, you can stand on ceremony as long as you want, but if you don't learn photo bashing and you plan to become a professional, good fucking luck to you. Luck. 
Deadlines don't wait on nobody. A nice little shape in there. Got a bit of the highlight in there as well. Remember, the highlight's gonna match the same color. Oftentimes, in my previous paintings, especially my older work, I never thought about a light, I thought about desaturating, but this we know for, for a fact is not the case, right? Because our studies into the interaction of light and surface have informed us of one very crucial fact, which is... The planes directly facing our light source are going to be both the most lightest and also going to be most saturated in the direction of the color temperature of that source. So, if the source is desaturated, the previous, previous logic kind of holds, right? But if it isn't, it doesn't hold. I'll be controversial. I don't think photo bashing is needed if the argument is purely about time required to convey an idea. Wait, what do you mean? Could you elaborate? I'm interested to see uh, your logic. Tell me. Inform me. Is the idea saying that if it's purely time sensitive, then you don't need to photo bash? Blue light in there. This is a highlight. I'm gonna follow through. Justification is normally that deadline depicts it is as a need, right? Yeah, so you can get more work done. A bashing as opposed to straight painting everything. I think that's how the argument usually follows, yeah. There. Animation over there. It's gonna be much more easier to kind of paint this as a as a rough highlight right there. And throw some blue on there as opposed to painting that. Draw from the start. I love like mixing and matching here, but I'm having a lot of fun with this painting because I get to jump around so much. Go back to Lord of the Rings, film, Star Wars, need all the Japanese games. There's next to no photo bashing, it's just mostly sketching. Yeah, cool, but then the argument can be made uh, in contrary to that, which is are the qualities of those productions greater to, or, you know, at least comparable to the qualities of today's production? Then I would disagree, right? For example, the latest Star Wars movie, I think, had the best visuals of any of them, right? The best cinematography, all that stuff. The movie itself was fucking garbage, but like, it doesn't change the point that I think it was the prettiest of them all. And God bless us having the tools, right? Because it's like, it's still, it was still possible to have animation done at that point, right? You could still animate things traditionally, but the amount of work and labor needed to, for a production was just so much higher. So I'm sure that a lot of the productions that we have these days are not even possible, if not for bashing, right? Because otherwise, they would never iterate fast enough to even arrive at the idea, I don't think. In there. There. It's coming out nicely, I think. Ready? Also, speaking of Star Wars, the projection mapping they had to do, like, I never considered just how crazy that... So this, again, comes from that Corridor Digital Channel thing, but how crazy did that pod racing scene look, right? In that in the first movie? And they had to project, projection map a bunch of that movie and a bunch of the textures in that uh, for that scene. It looks so goddamn good. Beautiful. Say what you want about the, uh, the original trilogy or whatever it's called. Rather, uh, whatever it's called, like the new trilogy, I guess. But then there's new movies, so it's awkward to you know, differentiate it. But uh, I really like the designs. I thought the designs were so, so strong for the um, episode 1, 2, and 3. And I used to be a really big Star Wars fan. Not so much anymore. Prequels, there you go. I think the Star Wars right now is kind of garbage, but those movies are not bad at all. Man. I don't think films have improved over time. The new Star Wars has some nice shots, but I wouldn't say the shots of Star Destroyers being smashed by a spaceship or something that I was enabled by photo, photo bashing in the sense it's normally used. You don't think that that idea was come, came upon by iterating? Like by iterating certain ideas, the idea of like what it looked like? Do you think somebody just said, okay, this is what I have in mind and it just went directly to the animators? Because I have no idea, maybe that's how it happened. 
But I would argue that just because it's possible, traditional means, doesn't mean it was necessarily as easy. Because I think if you say it's easier and more reliable to do it while bashing, Are we talking about photo bashing? What photos? But how do you, were there any roughs for that particular image, let's say? We were talking about the uh, the scene of the crashing, right? Are there any stills or roughs or frames or whatever? Like how do they arrive at the... Uh, like when they're doing the, the script, right? The color script or whatever for the movie? Oh, uh, to be fair, I don't know too much about CG process. I know about animation process for, for animated films. I have no idea how to do it in 3D. An easy way to avoid assumptions is to find proof of the claim. I'll go search some stuff up. Oh boy, he's searching. Thanks for the follow, by the way, Olvek. We're doing studies. Join us in the Discord if you like. The 45 minutes study. Let me get through these lines real quick. Everything holds just fine. Okay, just gonna fix some of these docs real quick. A lot of it, I imagine, is sketching. I think Ridley Scott still storyboards his own films. Good. How good is, how good is Ridley Scott there? Like, how do you feel about those new movies, the Prometheus ones? Some people really like those movies. They think they're really good. And I wouldn't disagree. I think some of the shots in those movies are fucking incredible. They're so goddamn good. Just the uh, the plot was a little bit better, but hey, I mean, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. I'll, I'll live, you know? Like, Prometheus as well, like, for as, like, somewhat, uh, as a movie as it was, like, some of the shots in that movie are just so gorgeous. Ian McKegg? Yeah, my boy Ian McKegg right there. Where he goes through his concept art for one of his newer, one of the newer Star Wars movies. Did McKegg do the concept thing for the, the new trilogy or whatever it's called? Like, the Kylo Ren stuff? Did he concept that as well? But I'm surprised because the concepts for the newest ones are just so obnoxiously de derivative. I didn't even think they had McKegg for the production. Thanks, John. He did? Oh, Jesus Christ. McKegg, I'm happy to, dude. To be fair, it's more of a director's fault. He wasn't the only concept artist. That might be the uh, the crux of the issue right there. Yeah, Ian McKeg is a hero, man. My personal heroes. Yeah, that's what I just said, yeah. Totally agree with you. Ultimately, it's a director's decision, right? Like, the whole Black Panther thing? Like, do you think that whichever workshop did the Black Panther lighting or whatever for the final fight scene, like, do you think that they... Wanted it to look that way? I don't think so. It's probably some director just yelling at them. Not many respect people the same way that Del Toro does. Pacific Rim. Good movie. Love Pacific Rim. The first one. Second one was garbage. The one with the, the dude from Star Wars. All comes back to Star Wars, right? Jesus. All comes back to Star Wars. Even the whole Game of Thrones thing, man. Game of Thrones got fucking ruined and now they're gonna go to Star Wars. Like, leave it alone, it's dead. Little ideas of this little highlight right there. There, right there. All about that money. Gotta get that out there. Green, man. It's all about that green. David Benoit, Benoit is in DB fucking voice. My good. How dare you. Thankfully I'm a lame ass book reader so it doesn't affect me too much. Highlights over there. 26 minutes into the painting. 
We're missing an overall dark there, aren't we? Yes, we are. What am I looking at over here? I'm looking at a gauntlet or a brace that goes like that across. Creates a shadow. Okay, I actually had to misalign that. I'm I'm from the future, GRMM. I'm sorry, James. Not you the future. Down here, we're supposed to go. We lost track of where I was there for a second. Ungi, how's it going, dude? I haven't painted for a long time, even though I said I wanted to. Paint! Paint right now. You have time to get into the study. Do it. Do it or you're lame. People often seem to fail upwards in these kind of, these lines of work. What do you mean by fail upwards? I'm not familiar with the, with the, uh, with the phrase. Idea right there. Bunch of walnuts in here. Remember, at this point, we should strongly be thinking about just sampling off our own canvas. We don't want to be applying a bunch of colors from nowhere because we're somewhat developed into the space already. So our major concern is going to be right now to just get this overall colors kind of matching. And if you indeed need to get some colors from somewhere, then you have to sample. But or then you have to pick the color from your color selector. But otherwise, try and keep the piece very self-sufficient. Pushing through mistakes. But sleep? Sleep? Dan's game. I don't think about sleep over here. Just anything. Care about no sleep. Guys, go watch Dark. It's on Netflix now. You know what I want to watch? I want to watch that show called The Boys. It's got Carl Urban in it. And I'm really... I think it looks really cool. It's called The Boys. It's like a superhero thing. I think those highlights really pop, huh? The comments is fucked up. Yeah, I know. I, I googled it on uh, when I first saw a clip on YouTube, and the first thing that came up is The Boys is a controversial adult comic book, and I was like, hell yeah, let's do it. I love The Watchmen. I was getting kind of Watchmen vibes with it, but it was a bit edgier than Watchmen, you know? A little bit edgier, if, like, if that could be the case. Because Rorschach, let's be honest, is like the edgiest character that's ever been written. Incredible, they find, found a way to out-edge Rorschach. Rorschach is my spirit animal. And I'll whisper, no. He's, good, he's pretty fucking cool, though. I may not like him. Yeah, this would be a great heavy paint, by the way. Might do this in heavy paint later. I love doing armor, man. I started doing the first episode, so that's, that's a blur, but I saw two and three, and those were great. Cool. Still using the Mixer M. It's, it's Super useful, but I don't want to mix though. I want to draw it graphically. I don't want to use heavy paint to draw paintings. I got software for that. I want to get better at uh, at thinking graphically. So I'm going to be doing most of my painting with line tool. But the eye drop is going to be very useful because I did the last one without eye dropping. My friend finished the series. I think overall they liked it. It ran as pleased with the ending. Oh, who is these days? Throw a little skeleton on top of this uh, this your armor. Can we just leave it like this? <laughs> Have a look at that skeleton. Yeah, I love like thinking about what texture to use in certain areas. That's like the most fun part. Like once you're done with the with the overall read, just going over the entire piece and kind of adding your little notes. Of texture because of the weathering is just so fat it's just satisfying to do why is that hand so big because it's first of all it's in front of everything else and also it's a gauntlet so a little larger than you think big old meaty gauntlet I 
think it's the special came from sort of laziness on the part of the writers. Like standard fair for, for TV. What kind of world do we live in where you just excuse writers, writers for being lazy? And that become the norm. Nay, I say, Elena. Nay, stand up for your rights. You deserve better than that. Also, I'm very glad to hear that Bonnie's puppy is okay. I'm worried. I had to take her to the uh, the vet. Emergency. Bad man. I care very little to what happens to people, but when pets are like in danger, I feel even way about it. I still need to finish the series. Well, let me know how it goes. See your thoughts. Thirty-two minutes into the study. Remember, this is a forty-five-minute study. We are done after forty-five. We time everything is because we want to be honest with our work. We don't want to paint with a the focus. There, of course, there is a time to do work a lot slower than this, but now is not the time. Because we have ordained it to be so. Given that essential quality, I just want this to read as armor, and that is that is my personal goal for this particular. I think we're well on our way. Always study with a goal. Always do paintings with a goal. Otherwise, especially with the when the information and when the goal of the painting is to learn, this painting is very useful. It has its use, but painting with a purpose, and that's where you get your real your real buck, your real, your real glory. Real improvement comes there. I'm gonna apply some light over here on the, on the left hand side. I want to silhouette out the rest of the armor with this, so I'm gonna paint this light right there. Bring all this over here. I just don't want to be precious with the painting. Being precious is a mistake. Bring this down here. I'm gonna force it to, to go where I want it to go. And when I want it to fit properly, oh, I got it to fit properly. I'm gonna blow it up. Blow it up into a bit of more of a cooler color. I didn't find much in the ways of photo bashing, but that doesn't mean that there isn't any. I do have two images, one from McKay and one from the artist, both of use photos. I post them, so from the original Star Wars. Post them if you like. It's cool for the discussion. Get some of the dark stuff. I gotta use in the dark to kind of form the shapes that I need. Essentially what we're trying to do, right? Use what you have, paint what you don't have. That way you're not adding all that much in terms of like overall color or value information, but you're adding more context to what you've already drawn. The whole idea of what we're doing right now. Very nice. I'm gonna keep my strokes a bit limited because I don't want to draw the eye to this location over here. Get them somewhat limited. I want to have a richer, darker, redder color. I've offset a little bit of this green. Something like that, maybe. Maybe I want to lose it, maybe I don't. I'm not entirely certain yet. I don't know if I want to lose that into the darkness or not. But I'll make a decision at some point, right? Why does that? Cool canvas, thank you. Also post it in the Discord if you can as well. I'll look at it later. What a McKeg bash looks like. What's your impression of all of that? Dark in here? Because really I want that occlusion between the armor plates. That's what's really going to give me a little bit of bang for my buck here. Ooh, that, that highlight doesn't fit there. I think about where it fits and how it fits is because of the angle, right? What's focusing on the top right gets that top right highlight value. The top right highlight value is indeed the value of the sky. Ooh, the sky right there. 
They're looking really sick, actually. Kind of, kind of dig this a lot. There's your male right there. There's a darker blue thing that I'm silhouetting against the hand right there that kind of completes the read. Remember, I can't go too, too blue right there. Small amounts of blue are sufficient. And things are overall kind of desaturated and also most importantly warm. Drawing a blue against a field of warm. I don't need that much that much blue over there for it to read as saturated. The color theory works. Things are stronger in the context that allows them to be strong. A warm is always stronger in a cool context. I assume I couldn't find very many images because a lot of the work is still in the NDA. Those goddamn bastards. Let's look at their work. There they. Alright. There are 37 minutes in there. We have about 10 minutes left. It's a challenging one, by the way. This is not an easy study. If you guys are struggling, don't worry about it. Is uh, the light the, the lighting is a lot less stark as it are on the other studies. Could have blown out the light lights around those ones over there. Not nearly as blown out on these studies. This one right here. That's what makes it interesting, right? That's why I want to paint it. That would make for a very interesting study. Indeed, it seems to be uh, doing just that. Use a bit of reductive painting right there to kind of get an interesting shape. A little curve right there. How cool does that look? Little details right there. That, that gives me so much happiness. I almost uh, wish I put some time into the face, because the armor I'm actually quite happy with, I can leave it right here if I wanted to. I don't need all that much information right down here. I don't need to draw those lines there particularly. I've got to shape this in a way that makes the brain kind of think that it looks the way that it does. And just that much I feel like is sufficient, almost sufficient. And a bit more of this darker valley kind of playing across the side right there. There, right there, right there. And that, that itself is kind of sufficient, also play with the edge a bit more. Affect the cropping slightly on the piece, crop it inwards, not like that, like this. Pretty piece, dude, really, really pretty piece. Have some red from here, maybe? Orange? Of course, I want to arrange my valleys in a way. Makes you think that there's more to be seen right there, I don't want to just paint things super flat. It has become a larger part of the production process, and I've seen it being incorporated tremendously within 2D work as a base. I heard from one of the guys that Maya was astounded. Maya, really? Let's go. Where is Maya a while ago? I'm trying to get into a little bit more 3D myself, because uh, Bizarre is doing a bunch of 3D right now. He's been itching to try and get me on there. Maya frogs. You know how I feel about Bizarre, that dude's work is insane. 40 minutes in, guys. Orange seems awfully lonely, right? Give it a bit more context. Also, you can indicate planal changes quite easily. And quite subtly by doing this. Well, it's not very subtle depending on the values that you choose. But if you do something like this and apply just a little bit of things like this, for example, a few strokes here and there, it sort of kind of subtly indicates that break. That's something you can do, but be very careful with your values when doing that. You can't, you can't go crazy with it, of course. It's something to do. And look at how cool that looks. And once you do that, indicate a slight little information right here, like a bit of occlusion between the two sides, and you can have like this slight permutation of edges, which just looks really cool. A bit more grays in here. Grays are so beautiful. Saturate up that little top. Might be one of my favorite armor studies I've ever done. You like it? 
Okay, we have some time to add some uh, spots, right? Add the spots. The layering is important, so we start with the dark first. Spot right there. I'm gonna adjust my pressure accordingly because all of these don't have the same dark value. It is it is hard, you know. Girl. Why? It's gonna be very hard. Right there because it has a dark outline. These areas right there. By the light on top of it. I'm doing much much natter than the last the last one. What are you talking about glow? You okay? You're doing much better? Oh cool. That, that's good to hear. I thought it's uh, treating you better than the last one. They're all warmed up now. So. Feeling good today, man. I think I some work done off the stream. Oh, we spent some time and actually give this guy a face. Face is missing some darkness values? Yeah, you're right. One of the not. What I do without you? Do this with a bit of selection because I actually want some harder edges in there but the values themselves are quite easy because I can just sample off the top one of the benefits of drawing metals man because metals since they're so reflective they tend to reflect true value which means that if you can have the value somewhere else in the piece you can easily reflect that off and all you have to do is maintain maintain the edge like all of the colors over here were just selected from different areas over here and it fits perfectly beyond just some slight little edge changes and that's the beauty of metals because otherwise, if this was something else, I couldn't do that with such an amount of liberty. Because with other things, with, with distance and with angle comes changes in hue and all this stuff. This is metal. Cool that way. Real chill. So I painted this with very little texture, by the way. This was all just brushwork. Kind of gives it a kind of cool, kind of blocky kind of effect. I do like that. Yeah, daddy's sick, man. Daddy's sick. Definitely jumped on that one. <laughs> Have you seen that rhythm meme, John? That rhythm meme is awesome. One of my favorites. More polish on here. Written? Not not written. Rhythm. Google this. Have a vote, man. You guys want me to finish this face? Because it might be fun to just make this a full piece, right? Actually, I don't want to. <laughs> That's why I'm making a book. <laughs> I actually want to paint something other than this. Yeah, this was really fun, though. My goodness. My goodness. Give him hair? Hell no, he doesn't deserve hair. What has he done to me? Done for me. Okay, give him some hair. He's gonna block him. <laughs> group, it's a group with armor. Yeah, look, for real though, look at this block in. That block in was pretty fucking accurate. Hell yeah. Got full Phineas and Ferb right here. We have the Eiffel Tower covering something that doesn't exist. A monkey a shower. We got applying from that Ed and an Eddie. He's such a handsome dude, though. Like, I'm not gonna lie. Like. <laughs> Look at his face. He was a 10 out of 10. Easy. We're just hitting on him because we're jealous.
What a handsome dude this is, my goodness. Getting lost in the deepness of his eyes. No homo though. What eyes? <laughs> John shifting his ethnicity there. Actually, it looks like I did in heavy paint, which I kind of like. I like that heavy paint kind of look, right? Yeah, m my one looks like a bunch of paint splashes over the canvas. Doesn't come close to the ref. I'm gonna call it a day. Hey, don't worry about it, dude. Genuinely, like, every painting does have a purpose, right? It does serve a purpose. Remember, I always encourage, kind of separate yourself out. Because I was exactly where where you are right now, like, so many times. At the end of the day, I, I, I work on a painting. But remember, you spent 45 minutes on this. That's not a lot of time. You you're, you only made progress, basically. Kind of just streamlined your progress all that more. Good job on that. What's 45 minutes for a little bit of progress, right? So many things going on in the ref that I, it's hard, I'm finding it hard to find simplicity. We can break it down for you. Because this is the last thing that I'm going to be doing on stream. The rest of the stream is just crits. So I can break it down even further if you'd like, if you think that'll be helpful. I think I'm kind of have to give up on that face right there. That uh, shoulder distance is a bit off, isn't it? I'm heading off anyway? No problem, dude. If you ever want me to look at that stuff, just, just tell me. I think a bit of a proportional issue right there on the side of the head. I'll watch the void to explain. No problem, I'll see if anybody else has the same question. And down there. I think I do prefer it to be just nice and simple, you know? Keep it nice and simple. Cheers, champ. Thanks for, thanks for stopping by, dude. Thanks for painting along. I know it might not feel like it, but... Right thing. Okay, we're going way over time. Jesus, I didn't check the time before. What the nine? That's fine. I mean, my armor is done way earlier than this. There you go. We'll leave mine over there. Let's give him a face, guys. Okay. Okay. Seems pretty good, right? <laughs> He's just so happy to be here. Yeah, that armor legit though. I, I love how it looks. It looks awesome. Boot like Ross draws. How dare you call me boot like Ross draws? That's insulting. What I like about interesting texture brushes, like you can just do sh random shit and oftentimes just looks good. Or it looks like Hollow Man. Okay, what is this? <laughs> you gotta be careful with that, otherwise it looks like that cockroach dude from Men in Black 1. The guy that goes, sugar and water. <laughs> Alright, let's upload. Dude, that armor is fucking fantastic. I really like this study. Had a good time. Yeah, definitely, dude. Show me canvas. I want to see it. Nice job on the studies, guys. We're going to review in a couple of seconds, so make sure you post if you painted along with us today. Welcome back, DT. How was your walk, buddy?
That was a really fun one. I quite enjoyed myself. That's kind of sick, Canvas. I like that a lot. Very neat. Sorry, I was just staring at that for a while. <laughs> Let's do a review. Then we can be off. Unless we have crits. So it's two studies and then crits. That's how the usual format goes. That's my gems right there. Uh, here we go. Nice. Jump down to the recent messages. Value well, today's studies. Alright. Lena in here. Looking not too bad. I think your face is quite accurate, actually. It looks not bad whatsoever. But again, that structure down. What I'm really happy to see, since this is your first armor study, is those darks. Those darks, I I'm sure that you yourself know, uh, I've seen, but how powerful those are to kind of give that three-dimensional look to the entire painting, right? So you, you did kind of miss a little, little one right here on the edge. Corner right there, because the light is indeed coming. At least there's a strong light coming from the top left and diffuse coming from all around in the top plane. So that's end up ending up having a little bit of darkness underneath here that you missed. But otherwise, like really, really good stuff. I didn't want to complicate things too much with coloring it. I think that's a great idea. I think you did uh, a fantastic job though. Great stuff. Holy, very successful study, man. I think your simplification re it reads very strongly here. Not too bad whatsoever. I will, however, caution you against the edges. I think your edges could do almost like the same issue that... Um, what was his name? Uh, TMP has with his edge texture, wherein sometimes... If you draw things a bit too grainy, they can lose out on the actual solid armor read. So while your internal edges are fine, make sure that there's not too much bleed through to your external edges, okay? So I'm seeing a little bit of greenness, especially towards some of the externals. So be a little bit careful about that. So while you have all of this as a mid stage, what you can do is you can just go over it with a, with a single highlight line and you can really fix that edge up and make it nice and sharp the way that it needs to be. That's one thing that'll do, but fantastic work. Also nice, nice job in the face, really cool. Good breakdown right there. There's mine. Spent a lot of time on the armor, uh, but it looks looks exactly how I wanted it to look. Almost looks nice and heavy. Uh, looks fairly complete with the rendering. I like the uh, the medley of brush strokes over here. Of course, could have paid more attention to the face over there, but I like the weight. I think this has a lot of weight to it, which I really enjoy. Of course, the sword. This looks very unfortunate. This sword right now. I might change that to Instagram. But uh, yeah, really. Neat. Dude, great job, KPA. Not bad whatsoever. Really good job. So I do like the fact that you're focusing more on the form. The form looks good. I know the colors are picked. But this is exactly where you want to use your pick colors, right? Because I want to see... If you pick those colors, I want to see good, accurate kind of brush strokes that evoke things a, a bit better. And I'm seeing that a lot of these cases, I think it's... All, especially on the, the breastplate, looks pretty good. It's a little bit overworked, but not bad at all. That's actually a, a pretty good level. That's a very good level to, to be at. Uh, with the brush strokes and yeah overall not too bad you missed some values in the periphery i feel like i could have a bit more lights over here uh a bit more light over here for example you're missing those highlight values but some of these areas like this and like this and like this really really solid job in the rendering a good job i think you're definitely at the point where you can start to th try to try to like evaluate the colors by yourself not too bad whatsoever the overall gesture of the drawing does kind of lean a bit towards the right hand side it's more balanced it's more centralized in here so it's like he's completely balanced over the middle of his body because it's sitting on something over here over here it seems like he's leaning towards the right a little bit then kind of shift so make sure that if you're not flipping please flip while you work it's gonna make things a lot more easier for you to kind of evaluate just how straight things are right because i guarantee that if you flip this image you'll immediately think oh my goodness look at how leaning things are so Control f usually flips the canvas as the default go ahead and try and do that because that overall gesture is slightly tilted towards the right uh, but beyond that, really good job. So think about the color then. I think your values don't look that bad either. Pretty good job. Nice stuff. Glow coming in here. Not bad at all, Glow. I think it's a strong simplification. I see that you put some work into the face as well. But yeah, you're thinking about all the right things because I see the reflected lights coming all over there. So I think my, my study looked exactly, exactly the same as yours not too long ago. 
Um, and then just I added a bunch of edges towards the side of it, and that's how I really cleaned things up. But yeah, going really good, I think. I think this is a good step in the right direction right now. So getting those values in, maybe a bit of light over here. But yeah, it's going really well, I think. So the things that I would work on trying to improve is, again, the drawing is becoming a little bit uh, slightly more curved than it needs to be. You can think about trying to draw with straights, perhaps, in your initial block in. I don't know if you use lines or not for this one, but if you have, make sure that your lines are a lot, lot stronger, a lot straighter, for example, to get more of that blocky read. Because you can always curve up a line, you can always curve up a straight, but it's harder to straight up a curve. So think about painting a bit straighter in certain areas. You did? Okay, so just straighten those lines up, keep it nice and chunky and blocky, and then if you need to get curves, you can do the curves later on. Nice to you. Yeah, think about keeping it straight. Like, I can show you on mine, for example. Even though there are a bunch of curves in here, see the initial block in right there? It's mostly just a bunch of straight lines, right? And there are curved lines within the straight lines. That's how I keep everything under control. Oh, sorry, I don't mean to give you epilepsy. Uh, but there you go. That's a good idea to do. Because it's easier to kind of keep your um, your proportions in control. Kind of draw with straights. That's why a lot of people you'll see, a lot of uh, realist, realistic artists will draw with straights. Because straights. But great work, guys. Great, great work. This is not an easy study, by the way. I should have prefaced this. But there's no sense prefacing it, because I wanted to see how you guys would do. But it is it's very uh it's actually a tough study I, like i saw this um when i was browsing when i was browsing pinterest or whatever wherever i found this and i thought to myself i don't know if i could do this in the time uh so that's why i picked it because i like to if you can't do something then do it right well, why not i don't believe in this auspiciousness idea of painting so uh we did do it and i think you all of you guys did a fantastic job so good job even like trying to kind of problem solve this is a good thing to do Kind of primes your primes for like easier pieces, primes your mind and your thinking into ways that it wasn't already. So just a good idea in general. To do things that are difficult. Right? The Roosevelt thing. We do these things not because they are easy. We do these things because they are hard. And indeed, they are hard, but we benefit from it, right? Do it. Doing some mild little cleanup strokes on mine, because this needs to go up on Instagram at some point. And while I chat. Also, this is the time where you submit your crits if you have any. I know there's one crit waiting for me in the um, in the Discord, but if you want me to look at anything else, now's the time. Otherwise, I'm gonna pop off. This is my mandatory streaming course. I want to do two studies on stream. I'm gonna go to sleep. See you later. See you. See you, Marty. Thanks so much for painting along with us, dude. Very kind of you. Oh fuck! I can't believe you've done this. Olderbock, thank you for the follow, dude. Appreciate you. We just finished doing the study in about 45 minutes. If you guys, if you want to participate along, join the Discord. We are a group study stream. So all of us have been painting together. I'll show you everybody's work in just a second. Kind of things that we do. So we all just did the study. That's mine over there. A bunch of people jumped in. Looking for a place to draw. Place for you. So we did this fox earlier as well. Fine. Welcome, though. Okay, let's look at some crits. Crit number one comes from Orbital Kraken. I made this a while ago, but never posted it on here. Any crits? Okay, let's look at it. It's a good piece. Okay, so I have... A couple of things to say about this piece that are really standing out to me. The first one comes with the idea of value structuring for backgrounds. So the way that you really convey to the viewer distances, there's a lot of ways of doing it. One of the ways is actually done quite well over here, and that's the idea of overlap, right? Because overlap is so important for distancing. So having this overlap, this overlap, this overlap, this, it really tells you that one thing is ahead of the other thing. That's a great way of doing it. But there are more than just that way. So what we can do over here is we can use the idea of atmospheric perspective and we can really start to bring this more closer to the background value because when things are further away they take on more of the characteristic of that background value so they, therefore they're going to go lighter so just adding this a bit of a lighter pass to this background it kind of immediately sets it to be a little bit more a little bit more distant than it was i saw that 2d landscape tutorial he followed 2d landscape tutorial is it like the, uh, are you talking about the Nathan, not the Nathan Fox, the Noah Bradley one, or? It's just a simple painting right there. That 
immediately gives me that distance that I want. And not just that, but you're gonna have a little bit of that atmosphere kind of seeping through as well. So if ever you want to push something even more to the back, remember that's gonna affect everything around it. So I can I can add some mist over here, for example. A bit more atmosphere over here, and immediately it kind of pushes pushes things. Kind of wrecked your structure on your clouds right there. Clouds back to where they were looking. One thing is always when you paint the cloud in, if you're wondering why your clouds don't look cloudy, most of the time the reason is, not just because you're just softening everything and you're not softening things enough, the reason most of the time is that you don't think about the cloud as having a top and a bottom plane. Think about clouds as three-dimensional shapes. That's going to really, really help everybody out when it comes to painting clouds. For example, if I wanted to paint a cloud, I wouldn't just do this. Right? What you want to do is something like this. But you start with maybe a darker value, if you like. Maybe that's a bit too dark. Let's say, let's say this is my darker value, okay? I'll start with my darker value. And the ordering is up to you. But then I want to have these lighter parts of it. So I want to make it look like it has a top plane and it has a bottom plane. This kind of idea. And that's what really leads to realistic looking clouds. And once you figure out this idea of the way that everything is structured, that it has a top plane and a bottom plane, and once this kind of really settles into your into your mind, then you can play play with this really, really easily and make things that look really, really crazy, but still accurate. Like you can have these big streaks across the canvas. And of course, doing more studies on backgrounds will also help with this idea, but you can have crazy, crazy streaks. And if you paint along with Maddie at all, you'll see these streaks across her references all the time. I think they look crazy. You can paint with these big streaks, right? Of clouds. And really fill up that that empty space in the canvas. Because you know that we can, we can fix this. Like we know we can get this looking decent. Add much more of a graphical quality to the painting. Out this mountain real quick. We can do something like that. Already looks kind of cool, right? Then it's going to look even cooler when I add some sense of lighting in here. I'm not even going to do it with a soft brush, I'll do it with a hard brush. Soften on the bottom edge a bit more. And I have a photographic memory in terms of random videos I watched. Some people accuse me of having that. But it's like... Soften the edges a bit more. Look at it in just a second. See, like that, you can just quickly add in something that looks somewhat believable. Really, really quickly. No idea. So, that's basically clouds in a, in a nutshell. So, you just think about everything as having a front top, just having planes in general, because nothing is 2D, it's a 3D environment. Uh, the Sun Valley itself is perfectly fine. I mean, it might seem a little bit low, but that's because of saturation, that's perfectly okay. Uh, again, the atmospheric. Perspective was the biggest thing. Now the second biggest thing that I want to think about, let me first look at that link. Today I will show you how oh, Jesus. Really Nemanja? Cool. Yeah, I've seen this guy's stuff a while ago. Uh, one thing I want to mention here, uh, as a closing thought, well, as my second thought, rather, is that the entire piece reads very, very homogenous in terms of the color. And this can be slightly helped a little bit because we can slightly change the color of the piece to kind of have these shadows read a bit more towards the So I don't actually have to do much painting to demonstrate this idea. We can just do this via a bit of filtering. So let's just adjust the color balance on this. I want to bring more of this blue shadows. You immediately what that does. Kind of adds this whole new dimension to the painting. Before and after. So what I basically did with that is I just took your shadow values and I pushed it more towards the blue. Because we're missing a warm cool balance in this painting. And that's really important to have. Because we don't have warm cool, we don't have much. Uh, in terms of the overall interest in terms of colors. So the color is just there uh, to kind of just, you know, sit there and be used by the value, but the color itself is not really bringing anything to the table. It's just there instead of the gray, basically. 
So um, that's the kind of idea that I want you to think about. So when you draw anything, try and introduce some sort of wall and cool because it's just another way of adding more visual interest to your images. Right? So as immediately what I saw, the entire piece was way too homogenous. So adding a sense of warm cool is fine. And also, remember, you're not restricted in a sense of warm cool oh, because they're God. cool and there's warm you've done this. all over the place, right? So, like, you can even note this in like that. Like, you can add purple over here for the, uh, for the cool. You can add blues over here if you'd like. But you can note through the blue, note through the cools if you'd like to. You can have a bunch of interesting kind of effects, but the overall idea is having a warm cool balance is a good idea. Also, some information could be provided here for the trees, for instance. Uh, like very innate kind of textural things like the edge of the tree over here is going to be hit by a bit of light It's kind of having this little edge quality of the piece. Nice. This is a very Bob Rossi thing to do, right? But Bob Ross would do this all the time. They're going to add that quality towards the edge of the uh, tree. They call this the frontal effect in lighting. And you'll see this with, with fur, with hair, leaves all the time. It kind of gives you a better sense of lighting. Having a little bit of that in there. You don't need to apply it everywhere, of course. But a little bit of it somewhere or the other might help and kind of help you know things kind of make a bit more sense because if the side of this mountain is being silhouetted like that there's no way this tree is not going to get silhouetted because the lighting direction is almost the same considering light is almost parallel right. so this is overall in composition wise this is not too bad right because if you talk about composition in a piece and i can talk about composition a little bit talk about the very basic idea of composition right which is your whole thirds idea so divide the entire piece into thirds so it's one third and then two third and three third so this kind of falls in your major area one of your major areas of composition so if you want to kind of get better composition I actually accidentally done it over here these clouds somewhat point towards my main focal region um, better yet for the composition would be to do something like this which is to simply do a curve because when you have things snaking snaking kind of lines tend to kind of draw the eye a bit more so I would maybe curve this entire whole cloud region up and it points towards my subject. Might seem a little bit heavy-handed. It's like, hey, look here! But um, the idea is a little bit... It's there, the idea. Like, you'd be surprised as how many of these little compositional elements are in like your favorite pieces. Over here, like another one pointing downwards like that, maybe. Like, this is way too obvious, by the way. Be a little bit subtle with this. But since I want to explain it, I'm going to be a bit obvious with this. Because right now, you know what this looks like to me? It looks like <laughs> looks like this. Like big, <laughs> big fucking arrows. But that's basically the idea that I want you to think about. Like, that's what compositional elements do. These, they kind of bring you towards the focal points. Of course, technically, if you're thinking about composition, then there should be a secondary element over here. If you have any secondary elements, they shouldn't always be there. But the mountain itself is enough of a secondary element. Also, remember, the mountain also going to be subjected to a bit of light, right? So right now, since the direction of the light is facing towards the camera, it's facing this way, the mountain is already in shadow. If the lighting is consistent, which is fine, there might be a little bit of a bleed on the right-hand side, but it's so far away that it's not going to make too much of a difference. Maybe a mild desaturation on this side. Just something to give a bit more of a... a little bit more, right? Like, this is not too much of a change, but it adds context. Context is important. a little bit of a change kind of immediately kind of makes the mountain a bit more three-dimensional right because it was getting a bit flat and it's okay because it's it's far away so it's going to be flat no matter what you do really important point over here to make if you're going to do any changes to a background please keep in mind the structure the value structure that's going to happen over here is this so remember what is the difference between this light and this dark this is a light and dark right there let's see the difference it is so incredibly subtle that's a really big deal Right? Really, really important to keep that difference. really subtle. Because the second you put something like this in here, the brain goes, wait a second, wait a second, what the fuck is that? Why is that so dark? Because you see, I can make I can make like a hovering alien right next to this dog, okay? There you go. This is the hovering alien right next to the dog. The guy in a hood. Okay? But why don't I why don't I see this and think it's a giant Godzilla monster coming from the side of the mountain? Because of the value. That's the most important thing. I'll put this same guy near the top of the mountain why does that look that far away? because the valley is being maintained, right? I'll put him in the mid-ground 
is the power of structure, dude. Like, this is the real power of structure. Once you know your structure and once you know how overlap and things like that work, like you can really place things further and further away. In fact, it's a really like when I was first learning um, perspective, uh, especially what I was doing was I was trying to I drew a straight ground plane and I kept trying to place cubes further and further away from each other. Also, look at this fucking ground plane. But I kept trying to place a cube further and further and further away. That's when you really kind of realize how important structure is. This looks like a plank. I know it's a, it's just it's just this one brushstroke. Kind of idea, right? The valley structure is so important. It generally does look like there's a coordination right there, right? Coordination like this. That's why. So maintain that structure, you see? Things that are dark in this context are only this much darker. Things that are dark in this context are only this much darker. Things that are light in this context are only this much lighter. The second I betray the overall structure, the entire piece crumbles. That's really, really important to know. And what I had to do, honestly, when I was studying backgrounds, was I had to do this. Because I was so used to painting faces where, to me, light versus dark was this much, right? So this is my half tone value on the face, and this is my first dark on the face. But that's not the case in you know, painting with, uh, with backgrounds, because the distances are so much greater than a face, and the contrast, therefore, is affected by that. So even though if I was right up to this mountain in the shadow, it might look like this, it might look this dark, there's so much atmosphere between you and the mountain, it's going to come in the way of your vision. So your eye is going to be right here. There's going to be one layer of atmosphere, two layer of atmosphere, three layer of atmosphere. It's going to be so much atmosphere between you and the mountain, and each one of these little plates are going to affect the overall read of that mountain. So you got to be careful about that. you got to keep that in mind. The same thing applies for things in water, right? Like the more murkier the water is, the heart is going to be able to see over vast distances. But then again, even if the water is really murky to a certain extent, grab a glass of seawater. You should be able to see right through it, but you can't see right through the ocean because everything carries a certain amount of atmospheric perspective to it, right? Light doesn't work the same way in medium. That's my crit for this one. If you guys have anything else you want me to look at, let me know. I'm going to export this. Like the floating dude? I think he's kind of cool. I have a stream deck that I should be using to kind of get a uh, timestamp for this. You can look at my phone. <laughs> Uh, I don't think I can on stream. If you need help with math, don't mind. All right. That's it for the stream, guys, today. I had a lot of fun. Hopefully, you guys did as well. Thanks for participating in the studies. That was a whole heck of a lot of fun. We did this armor study. That's our second study over there. This was done in 45 minutes. And we also did this here. Where is he? Where's my little foxy? There you are. There are two things today. A lot of fun, man. A lot of differences as well. Fur to armor. That's one hell of a jump. Also some of the work in the past. Hope you guys got something useful. Man, I'll painting armor. Okay, let's go and raid somebody. Is online currently? Thank you, Canvas. Sleep well. I'm, I'm going to be painting for the rest of the night, my friend. But I'm going to be having a great time. You guys got any suggestions? Yo, boy Scoobs is online. Hell yeah. That's my boy Scoobs right there. Right in. Not cool. Not doing art, though. Kuriyami. Mr. Kuriyami is uh, streaming. Eric Webb? Who's that glow? What are you doing, Mr. Eric?
Well, that's cool. It reminds me of Paint Monkey's work. Cross comic style real fast. Okay, let's go say hello. Everyone is online. Alright, let's try something new. None of my stream team partners are on. Alright guys, thanks so much for hanging out. Really, really fun stream. Always enjoy getting work done with you guys. And also, if you have any questions, critiques, concerns, all those good stuff goes on the Discord, Twitch, Instagram, Twitter, I guess. I have one of those, I don't use it. And you can expect to see the stream on YouTube later tonight, most likely. But I really, really do appreciate you painting along with me today. I do apologize, the streams are a lot quicker these days, but again, not that much time in my day, but I'm still glad I'm able to get stuff done with you guys and help you out. And you guys help me out as well. So, be nice to the people posting your raid. Make sure you hit that raid button. Hit that follow button, rather, when you get there. And I will see you guys tomorrow for some more studies. Cheers and good night.